Welcome everyone to the August 2nd, 2022 meeting of the Village of Rowing Bay Planning Board. The first three items on the agenda, signage for New Vance Hospital are being postponed until September. So we are ready uh, for the next agenda item, which is uh, Dakotas Allen and Liz Mazzarella and Seth Stickle, Mark Rominski, consulting for 56 Livingston Street, uh, it's adding a pool, adding a, a, a new wing to the back of their house, which will be in the setback and require a recommendation from us for a variance. Well, I guess that's what we're here for tonight. We can talk about the site plan, but we really are here to uh, give a positive or negative recommendation to the uh, the Board of Appeals. So who is here, Mark or? So, uh, my name is Matt Dakotas. I'm here uh, representing Al and Liz. I, I see Al's about to join now. So they want to give a brief introduction to the project if you don't mind waiting one minute for them to get connected. Okay. And I know Seth will be joining shortly as well. Good evening, everybody. I'm Al Dakotas. This is my wife, Liz Mazzarella. We thank you for your time tonight and all the great work you do. Say, hey, Michael, you know, you could mute your mic when you're not speaking, and it'd be a lot easier for everyone else to hear. Matthew, can you hear us okay? I, I got it, Jeff. I'll, uh, yep. okay. I, I, I got it. Okay, so who has the, uh, Ryan, do you have the plans or does, does one of the other, the applicants want to display the plans? So I think chair, I think the Dakota, I think Al Dakotas wants to have just, you know, a brief paragraph, brief in introductory statement to share with the, with the board. And then I think, um, you know, Matt, the architect and, and everyone else will, will follow. Okay. And I'll, I'll share that brief time with my with my wife Liz. But first of all, thank you for for all the time that you're you're putting into this and the consideration tonight. And we look forward to working with you on this project. Uh, I moved to Rhinebeck in 1997 and bought a house in 19 Chestnut Street and had the pleasure of working with the town, restoring that house uh, to its uh, I think better than original condition. It was a labor of love and we, we raised six children there. And Liz and I were married uh, and lived in that house with our six kids for, for many years. Liz? Um, that's basically what I wanted to say is that, you know, we've been entrenched in the community for many years. I currently work as a nurse at Northern Dutchess Hospital. Um, and we knew when it was time to downsize, we still wanted to remain in the village. And we were out walking one night and we stumbled upon <clears throat> 56 Livingston and knew that it was another home that we wanted to pour love into and uh, renovate and create, you know, bring it back to its natural beauty. Um, and we very much look forward to doing that. And uh, we thank you for your time. Turn it and, over to Matt. Well, Matt. Yeah, I, so we, with that brief, I can, um, is it okay if I share my screen? Cause I can pull up the plans that uh, Seth has put together and uh, and we can talk through that. Yes, go right ahead, Matt. All right, great. Um, let me just figure out the best one to do here. As he, Seth, you just joined. Um, so I think the the best approach in, in our eyes is for kind of Seth to walk you through the site plan. And then I'm gonna kind of talk about the architecture um and and what the plan is kind of for revitalizing the existing structure and the addition but uh seth if you're ready would you mind giving them a brief introduction of the site plan oh absolutely uh good evening uh i apologize for my tardiness you guys must have skipped a few items on the agenda this evening um uh, uh i'm here seth stickle uh, with mark rominski pels pc um obviously representing al and liz uh with matt as the architect um uh, so just a, an overall explanation of the parcel. 
Um, uh, Matt, if, if you wouldn't mind stopping to share, I, I'd just like to share what I have, um, if that's possible. Um, Just will allow me to zoom in and out a little bit here. Um, um, so I just wanted to uh, go ahead and, and first discuss the existing conditions um, and the existing site. Uh, the parcel is 0 0.235 acres. It's located on the uh, south side of Livingston Street um, in the historic district. Um, the existing two-story building is uh, uh, with a wraparound front porch, which is located here, um, is uh, approximately 1,900 square feet. Um, the, just to take you through uh, from the front of the street, um, the existing house has a, has a slate walk up to stairs that enter the porch. Um, there is a two-car to almost two-and-a-half-car parking area along the east side. Um, existing vegetation uh, includes uh, landscaping bushes with some mulch beds, as well as some shrubs and arborvitae um, that are located mostly in the front a portion of the property, as well as wrapping around towards the east side. Um, moving along uh, through the parcel, um, as we get towards the back, there is a, a small slate walk that uh, um, goes out to uh, a deck. Um, the deck appears to be an addition to the original structure. And there is a one-story portion of the residence, which is an addition in the back here, about 187 square feet. It's not listed as an addition, but it's pretty clearly not part of the original structure. Um, the uh, entire lot is, uh, is bounded in the rear by uh, fencing. There is a mix of both stockade fence as well as chain link fence. Um, along the eastern boundary mm -hmm. between the two driveways, you have a planter with flower beds that is proposed to remain. Um, uh, along the uh, eastern boundary uh, of that same neighbor, there are a mix of planters, some arborvitae, some shrubs, and a forsythia hedgerow. Um, as we move down the western side of the property, uh, there are some existing forsythia bushes, um, uh, as well as a few shrubs and a hedgerow. And in the very rear south portion of the property is an 80 square foot shed. Um, the uh, items that are proposed to change relative to this site plan are uh, removal of some of the bush material uh, and, and the plantings in the front of the home. Uh, there will be a slight shift to the walkway. Um, and in the rear, uh, there will be some changes. So I'm just gonna shift over to the proposed site plan now so that we can take a quick look at that. Um, just to call out exactly what is changing on that portion of, of the site, the, the north portion of the site, the proposed shift in the walkway and the stairs, um, which Matt will get into later, um, is to accommodate a new door location. That shift is approximately 6.3 feet to the west, centering it on the house. Um, the existing um, uh, landscaping in the front of the home is proposed to be removed and replaced with planter beds that are uh, blue stacked blue stone, very attractive stacked blue stone um, with selected plantings in, in those planter beds. Um, uh, for the most part, that's the, the only changes on the front, front, uh, front portion of the site. Um, the uh, walkway, I just want to note, the walkway is proposed to be uh, two by four um, bluestone slabs. Um, it, the existing walkway, which is shown here in a hatched line, is a mix of various size and shape of slate. Um, so as we proceed down the driveway into the rear yard, there will be a, a new fence proposed. Um, like I had, I had said, the existing fence is a mix of both chain link and uh, stockade fence. Um, and we'd like to you know, change that to be a bit more consistent. So it's proposed that uh, 350 linear feet, so surrounding the entire perimeter will be 350 linear feet of a Camaro hardwood fence. Um, so as we enter through the driveway, there will be a new uh, self-latching gate um, that will, uh, with blue, the same uh, bluestone slabs, two by four bluestone slabs that will lead you towards the rear yard. 
What we show here is the massing of the proposed addition to the building. And I'll let Matt describe that in a little bit more detail. Um, and then also along with this uh, proposal is a pool, a 14 by uh, 35 uh, foot pool with a, a bluestone uh, pavers and a, a new shed. So uh, uh, we are also as part of this uh, proposing to upgrade the existing sanitary disposal system. Currently, it's just a seepage pit, which is very typical of the village designs. And we're going to upgrade that to the uh, today's standards. We are working with the health department to approve that as well. So as I just back out a little bit here so that maybe we could compare the two, um, I just wanted to talk about the differences. Um, you know, most notably along the western side, as we um, as we add in the new fence, um, there's a bit of a, a an elevation change in that area. Um, it rises up almost uh, two to three feet from what is the proposed grade of the new pool up to the neighbor to the west. Um, so, in order to accommodate the you know what would be a flush patio and a location of the new shed and and the pool. Um, we need to add in a slight retaining wall along the western boundary, approximately 85 linear feet of retaining wall. It is two feet high with that four foot uh, uh, Kumaru hardwood fence on the top of it. So what you'll actually see along the western line is a maximum height of six foot fence. And that also leads into a, a six foot fence around all of the remainder. So it will be a consistent fence line. throughout. <laughs> Um, you know, uh, uh, as far as proposed uh, plantings go, um, you know, as I had mentioned in the front of the yard, they're looking to remove um, some of the older plantings um, in the front area and, and mostly moving to uh, planted planter beds. Um, along the uh, eastern property boundary, um, they're removing some of the scattered planter beds and, and hedges in favor of, um, you know, formal plantings. Um, we have detailed all of those plantings on a schedule on the next sheet. If we'd like to get into that level of detail, we certainly can, um, but we do have those shown on the next sheet. Um, and, uh, and for the most part, the remaining uh, uh, landscaping will be the Forsythia Hedgerow located in the southeast corner. Um, the majority of the remainder of the plantings will be removed to accommodate the septic system in the rear of, of the lot. Um, associated with the uh, proposed shed will be a small planting bed in the back of the shed. And that, uh, that uh, will just have a few plants here. And then there's also a fenced in area that will be uh, available to screen the, um, screen the uh, pool equipment. Um, so one of the things that's included as part of this application is um, based on the location of the proposed addition. The existing home along the western boundary at its closest point is located 5.9 feet from the western boundary. Uh, the addition that sits located uh, just a little south of that at its closest point is 6.8 feet. Uh, what is being proposed with the uh, new addition to the back, back of the building is a, uh, a maximum uh, separation distance of 6.5 feet. So it does not increase the non-conforming of 5.9 feet from the existing building, but because it is new construction and it is less than the 10 feet required, we've also included the application for the variance. Um, that's a critical part of the application for us. Um, you know, we've gone ahead and developed a lot of detail on the site plan here uh, for completeness. But uh, until we know that we can secure the variance um, from the Zoning Board of Appeals, uh, this building massing, um, you know, we won't be certain that we can, we can use that. So, um, you know, looking to this board this evening for some discussion of that, um, as well as, uh, you know, a positive potentially recommendation to that Zoning Board. Um, just a couple other small things I just wanted to note. Um, I, we know that it's standard practice in the village that for applications coming before the board um, that, uh, that improvements, if necessary, to the existing sidewalk be made. And uh, if, if not present, um, that uh, the sidewalk should be extended across the front of the boundary line. Um, so we are showing and proposing a potential 
extension of that sidewalk to the east. Um, it does create an interesting situation with the eastern property boundary, uh, just because their driveway does encroach uh, between two or so feet into uh, this property. Um, there will be a portion of their driveway which does have that, uh, that um, sidewalk extended into it. Um, so for the most part, those are the, the changes and the proposal for uh, the improvements to the site. As I mentioned, we do have um, all lighting and landscaping that is proposed detailed on the additional sheets. If anyone would like to get into that now in that level of detail, we can certainly do that. But I would leave that to the board's discretion. Um, and I, I can take over and speak to the architecture for a moment. Um, and I think leaving off where uh, Seth left off about the request for the addition is really, uh, it's, it kind of speaks to what Al and Liz were talking about, where this is the, the house that they kind of fell in love with since 19 Chestnut Street. Um, but unfortunately, it doesn't have everything that they need in order to kind of bring it up to the, their standard of living at the moment. It doesn't have the space that they need. Um, so part of what they want to do is request this addition, but prior to even getting into that, I want to talk about kind of what their plans are to revitalize and restore the existing historic structure. So currently the, um, the existing house has vinyl siding, plastic shutters that, that aren't very functional. Um, like Seth said, there's a lot of landscape there, but it's a little bit haphazard. So uh, initially on the, on the front facade, what they'd like to do is pull off all the vinyl siding, replace it with wood siding, um, repaint the, the entire house, uh, replace in kind all of the existing windows with wood windows, and then remove all the plastic shutters that aren't currently functional to kind of restore the, the aesthetic of the home. And as we were walking through the design, we kind of, we looked at the houses um, to the right of, uh, of 56 Livingston and noticed that a lot of them didn't have shutters. So we're kind of extending the existing character of the streetscape. So the two houses kind of um, uh, to the right don't have any shutters. So we're kind of, we're, we're keeping in line with that. Um, and then in terms of the plan, basically, let me go to the floor plan real quick to talk about that. So in order to make the, the first floor plan a little bit more livable for them, we, we'd like to request to move the front door to the center of the building. Um, it keeps the entry away from the staircase and kind of makes the living room a little bit more um, approachable and easier to kind of plan out and and that's also in line with the character of some of the existing buildings around it uh, so let me go back to the demo here and then so to get into the the addition basically what we'd like to do is remove that existing appendage that's kind of in the backyard right now um, that we don't see on the property card but we view it as an addition it doesn't look like it's uh it's in character with the existing historic structure and going from our last meeting that we had with you all about the kind of pool house structure, our, our first approach with the massing was really thinking about looking at the, the historic roof line and how can we kind of extend this to, to make the addition feel like it's part of the, the old historic home. And so what we did um, planning out the addition was we kind of just took the existing slope and pulled it back in line with the amount of square footage that they needed to kind of um, meet their needs a, as a new home. And let me, it might be easier to go to the renderings here. I'll kind of zoom in. Can everybody see my screen okay? Mm -hmm. Great. Um, so let me go to the aerial view. So kind of extending the existing roof line out and then using a, a slightly lower sloped hip to tie into that so that we can kind of tie into the existing gable that's running perpendicular. And also the, we were kind of stuck with a couple of uh, dimensions that, that we had to hold here. Like this eave, we needed to hold that line in order to allow for enough ceiling height in the addition, um, both on the first floor and the second floor. So that, that line was kind of something that we had to hold. And then obviously the existing roof line was something that we were trying to maintain in order to like, make this look like it felt part of the old home. Um, so that, that's kind of where the form of the addition came from. And then in terms of the plan, basically they, they wanna have a exterior porch, um, both at the ground level and at level two, looking out over their new pool um, and kind of have as much outdoor, indoor, outdoor space as possible so they can really take advantage of this backyard renovation that they're, uh, they're planning. Well, tonight, thank you for your presentation. Tonight we're here basically to talk about 
the uh, the variants. Mm -hmm. I guess uh, my I just have a couple of quick questions. Thank you for taking our advice and sliding the pool over, so it's it's ten feet from the property line and not not needing a second variance. And the first question I have is, how old is that extension on the back of the building? Is it so, hard? So it's been hard to identify. To to be honest, um, there there is on the property card. There's a a permit that was pulled for a um, a porch. And Seth, can you remind me the date? Um, I don't have that. I can definitely look it up right now. Um, and we think that that got built when the porch in the back was built because it doesn't it doesn't appear to be part of the existing historic home. Um, but there's also no permit on the property card that was pulled directly for that. So it is it's a little hard to identify when that was constructed. I'm just trying to identify the approximate date because if you're de demolishing part of a historic structure and that's included in the historic structure, we'd have to have a, a demolition permit to knock it down. Um, but if it's a recent addition, Brian, were you able to find anything? The only thing I could find, Chair, is possibly uh, if possibly the 1980s or 1990s, uh, because basically on the tax parcel card, it reads, um, that there was a covered porch and they dated it either in the 1980s or the 1990s. And the rest of the house was from 1900. Okay, that, that, that's good enough. So the only issue is um, the, I mean, certainly the board might have questions about the site plan, but um, so we don't, we don't have to, you know, do it again you know, or bring up some points that the board had concerns in September. If, if you get the approval for the variance. Um, we, we've done this before. We've, uh, we just recently did this at the last meeting uh, where an applicant on Livingston Street asked to uh, add, a, add a bathroom in a setback in line with the uh, uh, existing uh, setback that the house is already in. And we've done that for house on Mulberry Street last year where we uh, followed the property line um, and the addition matched the house and there were variances there too. So we've done this in the past that the line of the new structure follows the line of the existing structure in the setback. So, but I can't speak for the Zoning Board of Appeals. I can only speak for the board. So um, I'd like to hear comments from the board. Anybody? Um, I'm not opposed to the um, maintenance of the uh, existing building line. Uh, you know, the, it's the ZBA's decision. Uh, the neighbors may have an opinion which may weigh on the ZBA, but in terms of um, precedence that we've had in other cases, we've allowed existing building lines to be extended or um, existing buildings to be replaced with a higher second level at the same setback uh, in the past. And I, I don't see any reason why this one, uh, the three and a half feet would make a dramatic difference. So I'm generally okay with the uh, positive recommendation on the variance. Just one, one question on, on that. You mentioned earlier that the um, existing home is 5.9 feet from the Western boundary and you're proposing a 6.5 setback could you just go over again what what's the difference there if it if it's if it's simply an extension from the existing house why would they be different uh, if you could just zoom in to the uh the corner there Matt. yeah um and up to the top actually at the uh, the north west corner of the building so uh the the house is actually not perfectly square with the property boundary uh. Um, so at the northwest corner, it's 5.9 feet. At the southwest corner of what is the historic structure, it's 6.2 feet. At the southwest corner of the one story, which we believe is an addition, that back portion is 6.8 feet. So it uh, sort of um, uh, splays out as you move south through the property. Um, and if we could just uh, scan over to the proposed sheet map. Uh, so 
Um, Matt is holding that building line to the best uh, possible, but it is not directly on that existing side of the building. It is actually a little further to the east. Um, so it's not exactly holding that building line. Um, uh, Matt's floor plans will actually show that uh, probably uh, more accurately. Um, you know, we've just shown the outline of the footprint here. One further, I guess one quick question, but this is for the ZBA meeting, um, because it'll be a public hearing. In the past, there's been concern from neighbors when someone enters a second story, that the windows to the second story look out and invade their privacy. Um, I don't have an overall plan of where the neighbors' houses are or what it would look like. You have a house there, but it's a white box. It doesn't show any windows. It doesn't show any details. It, will that be a problem for you at the ZBA meeting? So we, we've actually intentionally not put many windows in the, that facade that's facing the, the neighbor um, uh, uh, that's sh currently shown as the white box um, on this side. And then let me go to the elevations here. That might be easier to kind of talk about. So we've kind of intentionally kept, kept that wall blank. Um, and there's just one high window in the bathroom in order to get some light in. Um, but that should not be too intrusive for the existing neighbor. On the other side, we have kept uh, kind of a rhythm of windows along that edge that match with the existing windows uh, in, in still height and actual uh, uh, head height. But that, that home, and I can draw that in another plan if, if that'd be helpful for the board at a later date, but that home is actually set back fairly far from the, um, from the existing lot line. So, at, it, and even in that case, the, the closest um, program of the neighboring building is actually a garage. So the, it, basically the second story is, is looking down on the roof of a garage at that point. If we could go just back to my site plan, Matt, um, just real quick sure. for, the, for the proposed. Um, you will actually see that that yeah. building on the east side it is actually quite far back from the windows that are shown on the east side of the proposed um, addition. Yeah, I noticed that it's a very odd house on the street and it's set so far back. Mm -hmm. with the rest of them. It, their house is going to look right at your pool. So there may be some concern on the part of the neighbors uh, at the public hearing at the ZBA about that. Um, Matt, could you just stop sharing just for a moment? I just wanted to share something else. Of course. So I just I just took uh, some time and just put together you know some existing and proposed, which may help you know to to answer some of that. Um, you know, obviously this is the existing side of the house. You can see where those windows are. You know that building is quite far set back. Um, there's um, when we look at the uh, proposed rear elevation, you know, just looking at the changes, uh, this is that white box that you're talking about. We could add in windows, but as Matt said, there's no windows on the west side and screening for the most part of anything on, on that side as well. And um, just looking at uh, the elevation on the other side, you know, there are some existing windows here. Obviously, as Matt said, there are none proposed. Um, uh, also just have, um, you know, some shots of the backyard, which may be helpful. Um, you know, this is kind of some of the existing rise in that elevation that we need to um, accommodate with a bit of a wall here so that uh, we can make this a flush area. Um, the, you know, along this, uh, this is the eastern boundary now, all of this forsythia hedgerow, which is the most, most of the structure for that um, neighboring uh, building, is uh, to remain at that height. So there's some pretty decent screening that's, uh, that's accommodating those as well. So do we have any other, Michael? Uh, Jeff? I, have one, I have one more question before. Um, can you go over one more time why the two foot high concrete retaining wall is needed on the back west side? Absolutely. So, um, you know, this, this image illustrates that the best. Um, yeah, 207 is the proposed elevation for the patio and the pool coping. Um, the existing building is a 207.53, I believe, as a finished floor. So there's a slight elevation change as you come out of the back building onto the flush patio. The flush patio is located in the area we're looking at. Um, there are actually some orange flags located here. Those orange flags are representing just about the, uh, the pool and a little further beyond that is the edge of the, the pool uh, stone. 
um, patio. So this hill right here is uh, approximately two to two and a half feet tall and rises up to uh, what is a chain link fence along that area. So when we started discussing this with um, Alan, Liz and, and Matt, in order to accommodate it, we were looking at potentially putting a, a small wall in just for a portion of this. As it, um, but when we started to look at that, it really did break up the sort of the rear yard. Um, and it just made a lot more sense to, to carry that wall from this point where we need it to the rear yard and then have the fence above it to meet at six feet to have consistency through there. Um, so there's, I, I believe Matt, you're, you have, um, uh, the renderings actually show that rear yard fairly well with the, um, yep. with the, with the wall. Can you uh, see my screen? Yes. Okay. So the bottom left one. Oh yeah. Even yep. that one too. So yeah. So this is what that, that wall would appear like. So it's, it's almost non-existent, um, especially when you look at it compared to what is only a foot and a half tall planter. Um, and it's really just to hold back that material in an effort to not disrupt anything, obviously, on the adjoining property, but to maintain that current line and accommodate uh, this fence line as well as the new pool grading. So that's, that's the justification for the wall. Thank you. Any other questions, Michael? You have to turn on your uh, microphone, Michael. Okay, now you can hear me. Yeah, no, I think this is a very strong design. This is a, a, a nice improvement over the first version that we saw. And I've been in that house a few times and it's, it's, a, it's a lot of little small rooms from what I remember. And I, I just think this is a, a vast improvement and, and I strongly would approve the uh, granting of the variance for this. I mean, it's probably a little tweak or two on the site plan if we get it, but uh, I like this a lot. I think this is a strong addition to the to the street and the neighborhood, and I just think it's well designed. And uh, I'm in favor of it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Guys, any other questions? We have a, a positive or a negative recommendation to the CBA. Let me uh, say a couple other things uh, before we go on to that. Um, one, in terms of the uh, the addition setback, I'm okay with the um, a various request there. I would like to see some sort of vertical, um, either minor setback for the addition or at least a strong vertical uh, board element separating the new siding from the old siding so that you can it's clear where the old and the new started so that we're the historic house is set aside from the addition. So, you know, either a slight recess or at least a strong vertical board because it's all gonna be sided the same thing. It could end up looking like a historic building that sort of just keeps going uh, on that side. So that would be one thing. Um, in terms of the site plan, just some uh, early thoughts about it. Um, so that um, when you get through the variance and you come back to us, uh, you're aware that these things are coming. Um, I don't know if we have any old pictures of what this house used to be in 79 or whatever when the historic survey was done. Uh, and I know the windows are new uh, are replacement and you're gonna improve everything. Um, but I would prefer to see two over two windows rather than one over one. I think it would, would make the uh, historic facade look better um and so if you're ever going to replace the windows i would urge you to at least do two over two so they don't have that one over one um new window look even when you're paying for wood windows you might as well get the effect um also there's a thing in our code in the historic district that you're supposed to have vertically proportioned windows um so there's that one historic one way in, that horizontal one way in the back I'm not so worried about that because you won't see it much from the street. Um, but um, the the, uh, the dormer windows um, and any other windows that are in the building should be uh, a vertical proportion to meet the code, ones that are apparent from the street. Most of them are, I think. Uh, yes, yeah. Windows so, that I saw that didn't quite look 
vertical, but I, it's hard to tell. The only the only ones, and these are actually vertical, but they um they they're more on the square proportion, and those just need to be like that for egress uh, issues. We basically don't have the head height in order to provide an egress window that's completely vertical there. Um, so that's kind of the bare minimum of what we can put in order to have egress on level three. As long as it has a slight vertical proportion, that's fine. Okay. Um, and then um, the driveway. In our code, um, in the residential district, you're not supposed to have any required parking in, in the front yard, in front of the front plane of the building. So since you're doing a new fence, you're doing a, you know all sorts of landscaping changes here, I would ask you, and I don't think we have the ability to require it since it's not a new home, um, but I would ask you to consider the, moving that fence back a little bit so that you would have room for two cars behind the front porch line so that you don't have front yard parking. Um, I don't know if you have one or two cars or three or four cars, but um, generally speaking, if it's certainly if it's a new site plan, we always require the driveway be long enough that the two cars can be park behind the front plane of the building. And I'm not so sure about the uh, the rear porch uh, railing material and the horizontal band again. I'm almost all historic detailing on uh, in the village is vertical or in orientation rather than horizontal. So you might think about that. Not so much with the fence, but the uh, on the building um, uh, torch enclosure. But that, that's, those are my comments. And otherwise, I'll, I'll vote for a positive recommendation on the variance. So we need to make it, and then we have to give our reasons for the Zoning Board of Appeals. Does someone want to make the motion? All right, I'll make the motion for the <laughs> recommendation to the Zoning Board of Appeals. Is there a second? I'll second it. Okay, and our reasons. We had to get this uh, out for Ryan and Miranda to put in the notes to send them. Yeah. It's consistent with the historic building on, on the front and the uh, later rear addition on the back. Um, the wall is blank, so there would be no windows overlooking the um, new windows overlooking the, the uh, property from the uh, second story on the variant side. <clears throat> and that there's going to be uh, improvements to the property that will help the neighbor's property as well, all around, including the new fence and other things. Do you want to have anything else to add? Also that um, the, the addition uh, will not uh, exceed the setback any further than the existing home. So there is, you know, there is an existing uh, line of, of house that runs back a good ways. Uh, this this addition will not exceed that, and it will be less visible from the street anyway. Okay. That's, that's enough. Uh, a roll call vote. Michael D. Aye. Don Clark. Aye. Jeff Christensen. Aye. David Miller. Aye. Good luck at the ZBA. And then uh, well, thank you, John, for making some suggestions and giving us a head start on the site plan. Should it be successful? Wait a minute, Chair. We have one more yes. process and procedure. Uh, uh, the board wanna... needs to declare lead agency. Yeah, I'll make uh, a motion to declare lead agency. We have a second. This is for the site plan, correct? Correct. Yes. Okay. We have a second. Second. All those in favor, Michael D. Aye. John Clark. Aye. Jeff Christensen. Jeff. Aye. David Miller. Aye. What about a neck deck? Do we want to do the neck deck now or when they come back? I think we have to do it when they come back because the plans may change a bit. There you go. All righty. So we'll thank see. You so much. Hopefully. Thank you, gentlemen. Really. Yeah. Thank you all for your time. Thanks for, Thanks for your comments. Much appreciated. Thanks, Matt and Seth. Well done. Okay. The next item on the agenda is uh, Hector and Debbie Rodriguez making some changes to the 
garage. Yes, I'm the architect. I'm Antonia Butwell. And I'm going to represent them tonight since they're not available. Um, and I can give you a little background and share the drawings if you're ready for it. Sure. Okay. Um, so we went to request a permit for a garage renovation. And uh, since this is in a historic overlay district, um, we've been asked to do a site plan review with, um, with you tonight. So that is what we're going to do today. I'm going to just open up the proposed drawings and share that just to give you kind of a, an overview of the project. But um, in general, it's going to be kind of uh, replacing the garage doors and refurbishing the existing siding, adding some new doors and windows to match the existing, um, and then kind of fin insulating and finishing the interior. Um, there's not going to be any proposed changes to the footprint, to the height, or to the site plan um, in general. So it's really more um, updating something that needs to be updated. So I'm going to open up the drawing so you can take a look. Okay, can everybody see? Yes. Okay. So this is for 22 Chestnut Street. Um, that's the main house, which I believe the renovation took place in 2010. Um, the garage was not part of that. And they you know, went through this procedure to get um, approval um, since it's in the historic district. The garage was not part of that approval. So we're here tonight requesting um, that approval uh, for this scope of work. Um, so this is the, a couple of pictures um, from the street, from the Livingston Street in the back, you can't see it um, at all, but from obviously from Chestnut Street, you can see it from their driveway. Um, it's right here in the back. This is kind of an old street view um, while, you know, there's, more landscaping and stuff now, but you can see it in the back there um, from Chestnut Street. And this is what it looks like today, the existing conditions. Um, they had put a pool in um, over the past year. Um, so that's now abutting the, um, the garage over here on the, on the side of it. Um, but as you can see, the front um, and side show that it needs some some updates um, just because it's kind of deteriorating in some parts. So what is proposed is to, this is the existing plan. This is the proposed plan on the first floor is to um, replace the garage doors. They're planning to use this like nine, like not for cars, but for storage exclusively. So um, they don't need operable garage doors anymore. They want to insulate the walls, close them up, put down a floor and use it for um, storage of both in indoor furniture, like long-term and then seasonally for outdoor furniture, um, they'll put it in there for the winter. So these are not gonna be operable doors, but they will from the outside look um, like garage doors just to keep maintain the, you know, the look of the, of the garage. Um, but they'll, their main access will now be through these newly proposed doors um, on the side of the building. And that's where, um, and there's also a door, an existing door over there. Um, so it's gonna just be a, basically an open space with one closet on the ground floor. And then on the upper level, um, the stairs just gonna be rebuilt in place and they're gonna kind of just section off the upper level so that there's, um, specific storage space for files and uh, more sensitive uh, art, stuff like that. Um, and then there's a couple more closets in the open space there. Um, so that's the kind of the proposed changes moving on to the exterior. This is the proposed on the top, or sorry, the existing on the top and the proposed on the bottom. I'll zoom in a little bit. Um, they are going to keep the existing siding, which is pictured here, and kind of work, work with it and refurbish it as needed um, so that it'll 
kind of maintain the existing appearance. The only real change that you're going to see from the street is um, the garage doors, which you can see in the photo here. Um, those are the existing doors, which um, they're going to get some new custom uh, wood, painted wood doors, um, which, like I said, will not be operable, but will just be for aesthetics um, on the exterior. And then on the side of the building that you see from the pool and from the yard, um, there's existing windows. You can see a picture of those down here, um, which need to be replaced. So they're going to replace the one that's there and then also mirror it and add one on this side and then add the main um, double doors in the same style and material um, of those existing windows. And then, so that's, that's kind of the changes. I also have kind of a diagrammatic um, aerial view here. Um, just to show you kind of where it is on the site and all of that. So that's the existing garage right there. It's tucked up right against the fence line. Um, there's maybe two feet um, on, you know, between the fence and the garage. So there's not much, you can't see it from behind, you can't see it from the front, and you can't really even get back there to um, access it. So that I didn't focus on as much as the front, which you'll see from the street and the side, which you'll see from the property. And um, this is now a pool. This used to be a basketball court. That's the only change um, that's there. But no, no changes are really proposed to this site plan. There's no changes to setbacks. There's no um, addition or you know height increase or anything like that. So it's this is kind of just for reference so you can see um, what's there. And that's that's pretty much the whole project. So if anybody has questions or need any clarification, but you know that's generally the the scope of work is to update the exterior um, and then finish the interior. Just two two quick comments. Mm -hmm. We're we're very pleased. We love that people want to restore and renovate the old garages, and you know so they don't have to be demolished. But it, I mean, is this, this, there's nothing in this building. You're, you're getting rid of two car garage and you're putting in an air conditioned, uh, insulated, empty building. There's right. no plumbing in here. There's no bathrooms in here. There's no, the, there's no plumbing in there. All the pool plumbing is off to the side. This is, uh, there is existing, like obviously outlets and light fixtures. And we're gonna replace those and add a few, um, you know, to code around the um, the building. But in general, it's it's an unused space. They don't put their cars in it. They don't use it at all as is. So they'd rather use it for much needed storage, um, both for, um, you know, indoor furniture, files, artwork, stuff like that, mostly on the upper level. And then, the downstairs can be used for seasonally to put in, um, you know, their outdoor furniture, bikes, and stuff like that. Any questions from the board? Um, if you're insulating it and you're storing, then you have to have some kind of heat source in there, don't you? Yes, there's going to be a, a split, like a mini split on the wall. All right, well, that's not indicated on the plan, so. Oh, um, sorry, it's in the notes, it's not. I can zoom in there. Yeah, so in the notes, I mentioned the lighting's to be replaced um, using existing electrical and new split system AC to be installed using existing electrical. And then there will be new outlets as well. So where are the, uh, the heat pump units? There's gonna be one on each floor, one in the main here and one in the main here. They'll be inside though? Say it again, sorry. Are they outside or inside? They're, oh, the, the condensers? Yeah. You know, I'd have to talk to the contractor. I hadn't asked him about that, but I would assume outside, probably yeah. in, in the as this small space back here. Yeah, either there or in the rear is what I'm suggesting. Yeah, definitely not to be visible from the front. Um, thank you for retaining the siding. That's important in that nice uh, loft door. You know, the only 
the only and the decorative um, element on the cornice line. Uh, that's all great. Um, um, the only thing that I'm not 100% on is the ventilator up on the top. It looks out of proportion. I don't think it's necessary. Um, it looks phony. It's I, I prefer simple carriage houses uh, rather than, you know, if they're historic like that, why would you add that up there? It just seems out of character. Okay. I think that's something that we could remove if that's what the um, committee decides. If that, you know, holds up approval. I think that's not, that's an addition, you know, like that's a little decoration. It's not. Um, it's not it's functional as a, as a ventilator yeah. probably, right? Yeah. Right, so it's decorative. So if, yeah. if you want it to be removed, it could be removed. I would vote to remove it. I, I would too, I agree with John. It's okay. kind of at a scale. <laughs> Look. Otherwise, I think it's fine. Everything looks good. Okay, so we and will. The, the garage doors don't look original to the carriage house. So I don't feel bad about a replacement set. These ones, yeah. Okay. All right, so I will remove that and I can give kind of record drawings to Ryan, so you have that. So my question is with the new garage doors, is it basically, it's just decorative and there's a there's a solid wall behind them or? Yeah, these windows will be windows, um, just so you have more light in there, but they are decorative that continues to look like a garage, even though they won't be using it to park cars anymore. So yes, it's a solid wall behind, except for the windows, which will be real windows. Okay. Any other questions? I'll make a motion to approve. I'll second that. Uh, we have a condition that the uh, the split systems are to be in the, in the back or, or wherever they're situated so they're not viewable from the street. And the other condition that John suggested is the roof line be clean. It is uh, right now not have that unnecessary uh, structure on top. Okay. Anything else from anybody? Okay. A roll call vote, Michael D. Aye. Jeff Christensen. Aye. John Clark. Aye. David Miller. Aye. Good luck. Thank you. Have a good night. Okay, Vince. Next item on the agenda is uh, Richard Duval, Lisa Rubenstein. Right court heating and cooling agent 55 Lennox Street. How you doing? All right. All right. Thanks for having me. Um, uh, I'm obviously I'm, I'm Brian. I'm uh, I'm representing Richard and Lisa because they couldn't be here. Um, I'm sure you're all aware of what's going on. We installed some mini splits without a permit, not realizing that we didn't have a permit. It was our mistake. I take full responsibility for it. And we're here to, well, I'm here to see where we go from here. Um, I don't know if you guys all saw the pictures. Yeah. Have you? I have. Is that right? Yeah, we, we've seen the pictures. Did it, I, I, it occur to anyone that four air conditioners on the side of the historic building with all these uh, white channels going up along the side was unattractive, I mean, and even, even if you didn't know you needed a permit, I mean, some of these channels could be, uh, it's too late now, I mean. I, I, yes, um, so we, we, we did apply for a permit. Um, we, we got a letter later on saying that it wasn't a historic district. We didn't realize it was a historic district, complete mistake. Um, I understand, it's our responsibility to know that. And, like you said, it is done um, and hoping to uh, work this out with you guys. I, I really don't know how, what else to say. Um, 
So that line hide material where the piping is, that could all be painted. That can be painted to match the siding that's done um, all the time. And then you have to hide it. I mean, there's a uh, evergreens, uh, some kind of decorative fencing, something, because this is, there's another image that it shows when you're walking down the street, it's a very wide opening on this side of the building and everyone can see this stuff. It's mm -hmm. not like we just asked the previous applicant, put it behind the building, put it out of the view so people can't see it. You know, um, so uh, it's very, very visible from the street. <clears throat> right. I was just gonna share that, yeah. So um, suggestions from the board? Um, these things are creeping up all over the place. And obviously this is one of the new technologies that's, you know, taking over. And we have, we have very little, if anything, in our code about these specifically, but in terms of the historic district, um, 66 South street, uh, was another blue house a couple blocks over that caught fire a number of years ago. I believe her name was Phillips. And she was one of the first to have these things installed. And she had them put where I believe there was a, a scene between the original front part of the building and then a later addition. And a chase was constructed. So all these vertical pipes were inside and it was on a seam of the building. And, and then at the on the on the ground level, there was lattice and bushes. And if you're walking by on the street, you don't notice at all. You you wouldn't even know these things are in there. Um, I've seen some of them. They go into attics, and I know nothing about mini splits, uh, but it seems to me like chases and and lattice and 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 evergreen things you know there's got to be a way to hide these things i mean we we try to get them in the back when when you know it's brought before us these things are up and can you can you reroute these these pipes so that maybe they go into the attic and they're all can you know in in one pipe as opposed to i'm looking at three different vertical and horizontal things going all over the place it, it, it's like it's it's not attractive. I understand the, the, the energy savings and it's, and it's good. And, and we got to find a way to make this work. Okay. Um, so with this particular install with, with new, new construction, um, yes, of course the pipes can go inside the walls. It's very easy. The walls are open. There's bare studs. Um, depending on the locations of the head units, we could run some piping through the attics with uh, already built homes, you would have to open up sheetrock and find uh, chases through the house to try to get the pipes inside. Sometimes it doesn't work. Uh, there's headers and, and doorways and things like that. Also, in particular, that that system that's on the on the lower level, there would be no way of getting the pipes up into the attic. It would, would go up and then back down. Um, so in this particular case, the piping had to be on the outside of the house. Um, Again, that line hide can be painted completely to match the side of the house and it does blend in pretty well. Um, I could speak with the homeowners and see if we can build some lattice or lattice has been built in front of these things before. Um, shrubbery, bushes, whatever you guys suggest to hide it, um, we can do. Um, but as far as going into the attics, these that the layout of this particular job, it wouldn't work that way. Just unfortunately, you didn't come first, but we are where we are now. One of the first instances with the Catholic Church, they, they came to us to put in too many split systems, and the, uh, at the uh, contractor came with a plan to put them on either side of the entrance of the church, running up alongside the stained glass window and going right to the front of the church. We said, no way. And the, they put one behind the bell tower where you can't see it, and the other one on the other side um, behind some bushes where you can't see it either. So, you know, but when someone comes, we find a way, but there's no way. If, if it's going to be some screening, it should be some evergreens or variety or some other thing that will be tall and at least put stuff in that's three or four or five feet high 
so that it will at least cover it immediately. Unless anybody has any other suggestions. Now, this house, if you remember, has been restored and uh, re-landscaped in the front, and they've done such a great job of uh, making it look better than it used to look. Um, so this this is sort of really out of character, and I I agree that <clears throat> it would be better if we approve these things beforehand, uh, so that we could make suggestions about how the uh, channel ducting can run up, uh, you know, in less visible locations and that sort of thing. Um, in terms of retrofit, you know, what we did on South Avenue in the same case, and they did not do a good job of it, so we have to be more um, firm about this, is that these things should be hidden. Uh, at least the, uh, the boxes should be hidden so that um, if they want to put in a evergreen hedge there or some something that's four or five feet high uh, that would knock down the view of those first, first three units, you really can't see the back one too well. So I wouldn't worry that much about the rear one, but the first three units there could be hidden by two or three evergreens in a configuration so that it allows air, air circulation, but uh, knocks down any visibility from the street. And I think, and then painting the ducks uh, will definitely help. Yeah, I appreciate all that. And I will definitely talk with them and um, I'm, I'm sure we can make them virtually invisible. There, there's plenty of space for landscaping and bushes like you suggested. And yeah, or a lattice uh, fence with uh, Vines on it. That's the other option. Okay. Yeah, I, I think that's either one would work. They, I think the one you're speaking about on, on South Street, John, is the one where they had put six of these things outside. Yes. Um, and the well, and they came back to us for site plan because they were renovating the porch hanging off the back of the house. And what we said was, um, they had to put a uh, four foot minimum evergreen landscaping in front of the ones that were hanging out the back. Now, those were kind of small. I see in this picture, you've got one over and one under, and then you've got another big one. But um, if you could come up with a plan to put some either, you know, high enough evergreen plantings, and we, we insisted on evergreen because, you know, except, uh, you know, when the, uh, if you just have regular deciduous items, they look like sticks and you can see through them. But if you could put some, if you could come back and put some evergreen plantings that would be high enough to conceal um, the units, the first three, again, as John says, that one in the back, you hardly see anyway. Um, or, you know, some fencing lattice, et cetera, but something high enough. The point is high enough that when you walk down the street, and you see what we're seeing in this picture now, you really basically won't see them. You might see the painted traces rising up the building. There's not much we can do about that. But um, the, the three front ones, the two, one over top bottom and the bigger one next to it that are closer to the front of a house, high enough evergreen plantings that would conceal them. I'd be happy with that. Okay. Yeah, that. I would I would say go over to 66 South Street and look what they did. It's a blue house too. Um, it, you don't even know they have them. Is that okay. the one you were mentioning, John? With that was I'm sorry, Michael. That was renovated. Yeah, it's a blue house. It's almost at the end. It's 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 by the east corner of, of by Beach Street. Uh, it's yeah. Right by Beach Street. Yeah. And by the yeah. way, that. <laughs> It seems to me that the uh, that other house we're talking about, where they put so many of them in the outside, and we made the condition for site plan approval to have minimum four foot high, um, looks to me like they haven't done that yet. You know, I go up and down the street, and it looks like they, they got not. a couple of looks like they got a couple of twigs hanging on a little. Yeah, it's, it's not it's not what we wanted. Yeah, well, they haven't complied, so that's kind of a I guess as the zoning enforcement officer uh, thing to do. But, but we have to stay alert with the zoning enforcement officer. We have 500 houses on the historic register. They're all old. They all want air conditioning. And sometimes you see that we have a lot of air conditioners hanging out of windows. And that doesn't look attractive either. So this is more desirable if it can be done in a, a good way than air conditioners hanging out of people's windows. 
and historic buildings. So we have to have the zoning enforcement officer on alert for any split systems on historic buildings that can be stopped immediately to come to the plain board for review. So Ryan, do you want us to, how does the board feel? Do you want Ryan to have them scheduled for the first meeting in September to see what they come up with? Because yes. you're asking us to make a, approve a modified site plan. Yeah, I, I think we should see yes. what's being proposed because obviously what happened on South Street didn't work in which we approved it with the condition of having good landscaping and they didn't put it in. It's not, um, yeah. So I think the best thing to do, uh, it's not gonna slow you down, the system's operable, uh, come in with a landscaping or fence solution, um, compliment the uh, owners on how good the building looks, tell them we think it looks great and that we want to extend that sort of landscape quality along the side of the building so that it hides these things. We'll, we'll do. I will I'll definitely speak with them and I appreciate your time, everyone. And uh, get someone up with some blue paint and paint the channel <laughs> tomorrow. If you, have the time. If, if you want the painted, them painted soon, we can get that done. That'd be great. Uh, you can okay. do painting without site plan approval. So, okay, perfect. Yeah. All right. All right. Thank you, gentlemen. I appreciate it. Thank, thank you. Okay. The next item on the agenda is a discussion about 16 18 South Street. And we thank the applicant for coming in first and telling us what they're thinking about doing and getting our opinion. We really appreciate that. Very good. Hi, good evening, everyone. Um, so this is my first time speaking with you all. Um, so this is my mom's property. And um, unfortunately, the people that told her they were overseeing the maintenance of the home just had really not been doing a great job. And I had been gone for a number of years. And so now that I'm back, I was <laughs> a bit horrified to see the state of the property. Um, it's a lovely property. It's 16-18 South Street. Um, so I've got a number of um, modifications that I'm looking to make to, first and foremost, um, make sure that the house is safe. Um, and then secondly, the aesthetic of the home really needs some work. And so that's my area of expertise. I was a home stager, a realtor. Um, so I, I really think I've got some great ideas about what we can do to make this home look um, as beautiful as it should really be. Um, we care about this place a lot. I know I do. So I just wanted to uh, go through quickly um, with you what we have and you can inform me what I will need. Um, actually, the conversation prior about the splits was super informative because I do have that on my list. So I was taking um, copious notes the whole time to make sure that if that's the direction we go, that we're doing things correctly on that. So um, let me go ahead and share my screen and you can see my agenda. Let's see here. I'm not used to doing things over Zoom. So um, are you gentlemen able to see that? Yes. Yeah. Okay. So the first thing we're looking to do is replace all the windows. I think these might have actually been the original windows from 1835. They've got the old metal pins that you pull out. They're just, they're done. So um, I've looked literally at just about every um, company that makes windows. I was definitely looking for something that had a wood interior. Um, I was hoping to actually do a wood exterior, but they'd have to be completely custom and millions of dollars. Um, so I found a beautiful window uh, by Anderson. It's their E-series e of windows. They're double hung, so they stay in the tradition of the home that they are now. Um, we're looking to do 15 in total. So I can show you pictures. Let me know whenever you want me to pop pictures up. We've got three of one size, two of another size. Those are all, I'm sorry, the first three we're gonna be changing from 22 by 22 and we're gonna enlarge those to approximately 34 by 45 and put in a double hung. Right now they're just a squared out boxed window. They don't go with the house. They look terrible. They're spaced kind of oddly. Um, and so I wanna get those windows looking like the rest of the windows on the house. They may not be the exact same size, but they'll definitely be, um, same style of window that the others are. And then we've got two that are 34 by 62. That's the same size as they are now. And then we've got an additional 10 that are 34 by 54. Um, so that's the idea with the windows. Uh, the question I had, and then you can obviously you'll have questions for me, I would imagine. Um, my big question is, um, A, first I know we need a permit, yes. 
You need to come to the planning board for site plan approval because it's on the historic register. Okay. The historic buildings have to come for, for approval. Is this a one family or a two family? It's a two family. Um, and uh, we would prefer the two over two windows rather than the one. You just heard that if you were here in the previous discussion about not having uh, single pane windows. We prefer two over two. It looks more historic. Right, and I think we've got, um, I can show you the pictures if you want. Um, yeah. It's a picture of the house. I didn't get a chance to look at it. Yeah, okay. So um, there's the front view of the home. Okay. Um, and you can't really see in this picture. No, we don't see it. Sorry, we're not so Let me show it. you another picture, but I just wanted to, for those of you that may not be familiar with the house, um, give me one moment. I have them all numbered. Um, where'd they go? Okay, so this is what's there now. This is on 18. This is the, if you're facing the house, this is on the left side of the house. The window on the right is in you the can't bathroom. See it yet. You have to, you're sharing the screen, Ryan? She's, well, yeah. she can share it, but. You have to bring up the photo. You got out, you probably have to go back in now. Oh, sorry. Click okay. on the picture. Yeah, I do. Um, how do I get to? There we go. Okay. Now you can see? Yeah, we can see that. Now you have to show, you know, there are 12 items you have. Yes, okay. So this is these are the two windows that are on uh, 18, on the 18th side of the house. So if you're facing the house, it's the left-hand side of the house. You have to click on them because we're just seeing your list of one to 12. It says I'm screen sharing. Right, I, and I, we see a list from grill pattern. Uh, I've got a photograph up. I'm not sure why. Hmm, let me try again. I'm sharing screen, enlarge windows, share. There we go. There you go. Okay, sorry, it looked like it was sharing. Okay, third try is a charm. So again, this is 18, this is the left-hand side of the house. Um, these two windows, I would like to, those are the two that I'd like to enlarge and get them to look more like the other windows on the house. The one on the right's in a bathroom, so I do have a size limitation there because I've got a toilet directly below it and a shower to the left of it, so I can only go so big there, and I don't want to go really much higher because then the proportions are gonna to look totally weird. And then the window on the left is in a closet. So there I have more space, but I want them to be um, identical in size, again, to keep the aesthetic looking um, much nicer, keeping things more symmetrical. So those are the two there that I want to, uh, I can enlarge them to about 34 by 45. So they'll be the same uh, width, as all the other windows on the house, but they won't be um, quite as tall, but they will be in the same style of all the other windows. So I think they will fit in way better. And I think it will make the front of the house look much better. Um, and these then- are the, These are on the side of the house. No, this is actually facing the front of the house. This is um, the bedroom on 18. So if you're facing the front of, the house, it's on your left. You have a presentation of the house overall, so we get a sense of. Yep. I'm still not sure which house this is. Okay, let me see. Uh, <clears throat> do I have to hit screen share every time? New share. Okay. Bear with me. Never I've only done this a couple of times. Can you see that? Yeah. yeah. Back to the list. Shoot. It says I'm sharing. Screen share. Whatever's on your screen, we will there see. There we go. Okay, okay. I'm get, I understand the process now. Apologies okay. for the delay. So, I, yes, I know the process now. So you can barely actually see them because we've got these ginormous pines. Well, the garage pretty. is on the right side. Correct. And, and, the, and the bathroom closet's on the left side. And then there's two front doors. Yes. So there's the two windows on the left side of the house that are those 22 by 22s. They they look bigger because the framing is oddly disproportionate to the window, but they're actually only 22 by 22. 
I think I can get them enlarged to 34 by 45. Um, and then let me show you the other <clears throat> video. Uh, let's get back to screen share, new share. You don't have it set up as one continuous slideshow and you've got to get out and get back in each time you show a picture. Yeah, I mean, I've got them all here in a folder. My apologies, I wasn't sure how to slideshow them. Um, so let's see. Can you see that? Not no. yet. Nope, hold on, I got it. You got to get out and get back in the there. Yeah, yeah, sorry. So, this is now the right hand side of the street of the house. So this is the address 16 South Street. Um, and that's the third window that's the same as the two that are on the left. So um, keeping in proportion with the garage next to it, I think going 34 um, will be fine, the width. I think we can get away with that. And I think 45 will work there as well. So oh. All three are the same. You know, I'm really looking to create a lot of symmetry so that it looks more natural and look like they were original as much as they can be to the home. So is it 34 foot wide by 45 foot inch high? Correct. Okay, That's so one. it's vertically portioned. That, that will help. Yeah. And on the other two, I, I'd like to bring them in a little bit if I can. They're a little bit spread far out. But again, I've got limitations with the shower. So, right. um you know, just know that I'm aesthetically looking at every aspect of this and that's my first and foremost um, thought process with everything that I'm looking to do to make the home better. Now, looking at this picture of the house with the, the, the two front doors, the garage on the right, the, the bathroom closet on the left, isn't it? You can put all the systems you want on the back of that house and bring the air conditioning you know, forward without having to see it visible from the street. There's a lot of a lot of ways that can be done. There's okay. a, lot, a lot of hiding behind the garage, behind this wing on the left side. There should be a lot of ways that um, an informed company can figure out a way to do this without you know chopping right. holes in the wall. So, if I could, if we could, just for a moment, just jump back to the windows. Um, because I know I've got to get on your schedule to actually do a more formal presentation. Um, but these windows, the lead times are really long. And so I do want to get them going if possible. And um, I believe I, I, what my question is, is on the, the grills. So currently we've got the six grill colonial on the double hung upper and lower. And I've got a photograph of, um, a bunch of different grills that I wanted to show you and I wanted to see what is acceptable and what is not. You can't see that, can you? Yeah. yeah. No, hold on. New share. <laughs> ay, ay, ay. Yes, are you are you intending to um, provide some architectural drawings when you come for site plan approval that show how the new proposed dimensioned windows would appear in each of the facades? Um, no, it's, I mean, it's hard to picture this, and I. I, I mean, I. I I've done a lot of just drawing myself. I mean, I think I could scale them pretty well to show you what we're looking to do, um, unless you expect that they have to be, you know, a true architectural rendering. I just, you know, I've got a pretty tight budget. Um, we don't, we don't require, you know, just, you know, we make it easier, but if you can come drawing some photographs or figure out how to do it and put this in either a PowerPoint slideshow or a, 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 a PDF with all the images in it, so it make it easy for you to scroll through them. Um, right. Ask someone to help you do that. Either way, PowerPoints work, uh, right. slideshows work, uh, PDFs work. 
Yep. I mean, if I had been in person, you would have each had a notebook <laughs> with all the printed pictures. I'm sorry, I'm just used to doing more formal in-person presentations. Are you able to see that grill pattern? No. No. Gosh, I don't know why oh, it's oh, the current house has. I didn't I didn't look at that in the original. It looked like six over six to me. It is. And you know, as you know, our house sits on the lake. And um I'm not inclined to, you know, I'm going with the double hung. Um, but I'm not terribly inclined to stick with the six over six, if at all possible. Um, I certainly don't want them to look modern <laughs> at all. That's not what I'm looking for either. Um, but based on the color that I'm doing and the material that I'm using on these windows, they're going to have a very kind of vintage appearance anyways. They're not going to look modern at all. So I'm not sure why I can't seem to share it now all of a sudden, but I do have... Um, a bunch of different style of grids that I wanted to show you. Um, uh, generally speaking, I would suggest that you use six over six if they're replacement uh, double pane windows have exterior muntins, the dividers be exterior. They don't have to be wood. They can be that sort of cladding material, uh, but they should be six over six where you're taking out a six over six window. That's my opinion on the front. Uh, the new windows on the additions on the side, they could be two over two because those aren't original to the house. Well, um, those actually aren't getting replaced. So, well, you just showed them to us that you were going to replace them. Yeah, on the front of the house, on, on the, the side, side of the house. Yes. Yeah. So um, we're most concerned with the front of the house, what it sees from the street. We're not in boats out on the, on the Crystal Lake, you know. Um, but, um, other people might have a different opinion about maintaining the historic character, even from the rear. But for me, it's the most important is that the front windows that are going to be replaced the, that face the street replicate the existing window patterns and have exterior dividers so that they are true six over six with double pane windows or whatever you want to do uh, behind the, the exterior muntins, the dividers. Um, uh, the house, the windows replacements on the side, the two additions can be two over two, but they have to be vertically proportioned. They can't be horizontally proportioned overall. Um, and in terms of the rear, because you have, you're trying to accentuate the view, I would be willing to go to two by two in the rear rather than six over six, uh, so that you could uh, have less expense and better views from the windows that face the lake. Okay. That, that's my opinion. I don't know what other people think. I don't know if you're familiar with the prairie um, design. And again, I have uh, Yeah, I mean, I know what Frank Lloyd Wright did, but um, that, that's not appropriate for this sort of house um, or this village, generally speaking. You should stick to the type of window framing that was original to the house. David, do you, do you think that there's a photo of the house available in the archives? Uh, yeah. To show what it might have been. I mean, those, those little square windows to the left and the right, uh, those tiny ones, uh, I, I doubt were original. No, that's, that was an addition. That yeah. was not yeah. part of the original house. I think I remember when the garage was added to this house. Right. On so the right, John? Yeah, on the right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so on the right, the garage, and then there's one small window. And then on the left, that was a separate addition with the two windows. So again, I'm not pleased with those. I realize they don't architecturally go with the home, the neighborhood. So I am, as I stated at the beginning, looking to get them um, to assimilate to everything else on the house. We are seeing your screen now uh, with your prairie style window patterns. This oh. is my, 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 my screen, John. Oh, okay. We're seeing a screen. <laughs> you're, you're seeing the clerk screen. <laughs> okay. Hi, Ryan. But these wouldn't be appropriate to this house, I don't think. No. Ryan, could I share my screen? <laughs> I mean, I see a lot of houses. I've really walked South Street quite a bit, and there's many homes that do not have six over six on the. No, but if this house has six over six, we would ask you to retain them. If those houses, like the house that was previously on the agenda, 
somewhere along the line, it was replaced to, you know, one over one, and we're asking them to take it back to two over two. Um, but if it was six per, over six, I would ask them to maintain that window pattern, even if they upgrade it with modern windows. Okay, so there are new windows, but again, I'm really the aesthetic of one of the reasons I went with this Anderson E series window is that you can really fully customize it. And so as opposed to a traditional um, outside that's vinyl, this is actually going to be an aluminum and they come in really beautiful colors. And so we're also repainting the home. So they're going to really blend in and look um, very much. They could look, I'm going to try to get them to look as original as possible. I think I was just trying to steer a little bit away from the six over six um, if possible. Um, and I'm then suggesting you like maintain eight. that at least on the front of the house. Okay. And then on the sides, I can do the two by twos, any side facing windows. Yeah, I would stick to traditional patterns though, rather than prairie style or something that really doesn't fit with the house. Um, right. Certainly those, those, those single pane windows can be replaced by two over two and they would look much, be much better. Of course, yeah. Well, I'm going to keep them in the same style as the other windows on the front of the house. I, where it's going to be tricky because I'm not sure we have enough space to do a double hung, but I will obviously have all that worked out by the time I come back to see you. Okay, so um, four windows on the front that have the, the, the six over six. On that Google screen that I just lost, something happened. Um, so it's not all, not all the windows, just, just, the, just the four saw on the front. It would be, um, I can get back to the picture of the house, screen share. Where's my... Try to get a good picture of the house, but there were a lot of trees in the way on uh, Zoom and on Google. I don't see my desktop to show you. I don't understand why I'm doing screen share and it's just not giving me my desktop now. You may have to, uh, when you do a screen share, if you have multiple um, windows open on your desktop, you may have to select the correct window. And... Yeah, it's, it's on, well, if I, when I click the share button, it's showing me whiteboard and it's showing me Microsoft Word, which is the renovate, which is the outline that I have for you. So I don't have a bunch of things open at all. I have the Zoom screen yeah. open and then I have the folder that has all the photographs in it. You have to have the photo uh, open. You have to open the photographs. And you can see the photographs. What you see is what we see. You have to click on one of the photographs. Right. It, it, was, working, it was working before. So share screen. Oh, can you see it. this? Yeah, we see that. Is Only this, one person can share this, at a time. Okay. This is what you were looking for before, David? Yeah. I, well, I, uh, so the I, position I, of the windows is this. So the two largest windows, the 34 by 62, there's two of those, one on each side of the house. Um, they are, that is all the original house. Right. And then upstairs, there's two windows that face the front. And those are, oh, I'm sorry. There's two windows on each side on the upper um, two bedrooms. It's like a bedroom and a den and then a bedroom and a den on each side. So it would be a total of four from the original house. And then the two to the left that we're going to change the style of, and the one to the right so, to the garage. All we're asking is that the front, those four original windows, be changed to six over six, and okay. the back you can go to two over two on the garage and on the bathroom closet wing you can have two over two. Just that those four windows retain the original look of the house, if that's possible. I think there's five on the front because there's one over the doorway too. I couldn't see through the trees. Yeah, I mean, I got an angle. It looked to me like there were five, six over sixes, but it's hard to tell from Google Maps. But all we asked for is the front ones, you know, be- Oh, here we go. Okay. My goodness. Can you see that? Yes. Okay. Yeah, so there's- oh, no, Sorry, I, I just really not, I'm usually not so tech, technically dumb. Um, okay, so now that you can see it, those are the two large ones. That's the original part of the house. And then the uppers, you have two on each side, two for each address. That's all original. 
I would keep those all identical. Yes. Yes, and all the other windows uh, on, on the garage side, on the bathroom side, in the back of the house, and be the two over two. That's all we would ask from you. Okay. I mean, I would like to try to get them to look um, as much like all the other windows as possible. But I just don't know, you know, space wise, if we're going to be able to put in six grids, top and bottom. But again, it's a closet and it's a bathroom. So maybe, I mean, well, is I double, double hung mandatory? I don't know if we're going to have enough space to get them. I mean, my goal is to enlarge them as much as possible to go with the rest of the house. I realize they're not proportionate. They don't look right. But again, I've got the limitations. So as yes, goal, those are on a more modern additions. Um, if you can't get double hung, that's fine with me, as long as they have a vertical proportion rather than a horizontal proportion, I think they're fine because what you're replacing is not so great. Um, so whatever you do is probably going to be a little better. It's the main historic portion of the house. We want to retain the uh, historic look from the street. Right. Not the, uh, not the two side additions. Right. I understand. What are your other questions? There we go. Okay, so now can you see the grid pattern? Yes. Okay, so um, I thought if there was an option to make some changes, I was interested in, um, I think the prairie, um, maybe top or bottom um, would fit nicely with the aesthetic of the home. But if you're saying that it's gotta be the six over six and then we can do something different. I'm just not really to do, you know, some windows one way and do the rear windows a different way. It's great that we have that option, but you know, it loses a little something, I think, when we switch up the grill patterns. I think as long as uh, the sides of the house are consistent, you know, nobody compares the front to the rear because uh, you don't see them at the same time. Right. My house has uh, 12 over 12 upstairs and two over two downstairs. Okay. original window well probably not original windows but somewhere replaced along the way uh, but they're both a colonial sort of pattern uh, right. that, is, that it fits with the house you have a sort of colonial type house uh, a prairie window would not fit in it it just wouldn't look right i've actually seen it i thought that aesthetically looked nice but i guess all houses sort of have their own you know appeal to work in certain areas and uh, you know not in others um yeah. on the rear when you say, I just want to clarify, when you say that they can be two by two over two, can you just give me a little bit better explanation as what you mean by that? Um, it's like the colonial version on the screen, except it doesn't have any horizontal. So there's two long windows on the top frame and two long windows on the bottom frame. Are there any grill patterns or no? That is the grill pattern. There's just one vertical divider that goes down the middle of the. Oh, I see what you're saying. The window, top and bottom, so that the there's that's what a two over two is. Gotcha. So it's it's technically like four if you add up the top and the bottom. I gotcha. Okay. Yeah. All right. Thank you for that. Um, okay. So I think I know what we need to do now in terms of the windows. Um, I'll talk to you in a minute, I guess, about what the next steps are for that. But that kind of covers. Um, what we're doing for the windows. Um, so we too are <laughs> trying to figure out what we're gonna do here. It's very hot, obviously there's no, we have window units now. I realize they look terrible. I hate the look of them. They're not efficient. They're expensive to run. And you know, first and foremost, they just look bad. So I wanna get rid of those. Um, so I've been starting to get some quotes between doing AC heat splits versus getting a whole HVAC system installed. My preference is to do an HVAC. I don't even want to start to play with all these different condensers. Um, and then, you know, you've got the piping coming down the sides or the front and you paint them. I mean, it, it's just a lot. However, <laughs> you know, price-wise, they're a whole lot less expensive and they actually are more efficient because you can just go room by room with them as opposed to turning on a whole system. So I took notes on everything that you said about what went wrong with the last one. Um, I think I understand what you need to have done with that. Obviously we'll discuss that once I make a decision and you know, I've got a whole budget I have to figure out. So um, I may end up having to do them, but my first goal would be <laughs> to make them uh, disappear. 
So that's, I just didn't that's know. That's our goal too. Yeah, I trust me. I nobody wants to see those. I mean, even with an HVAC system, though, we're going to have to have some condenser put somewhere. Yeah, uh, they can be put in the rear. You know, everybody comes out. Every company comes out and tells you something different. And so, obviously, that would be my guidance to get from you. Get it done right the first time. I don't want to come back and be told you got to put this in and that in. And, you know, you did it wrong. I want to just get it right the first time. Um, so I don't want to see them either. Um, so the good news is on the sides of the house. So let me just pull these pictures up. Um, okay, let me pull up one more and then I screen share. goodness. I can't even find the zoom anymore. There it is. I'm also used to working on a big monitor at home and I'm only on a laptop here, so I'm a little confused. Okay, so we've got side yard space. You able to see that? Yes. Okay. And there's a fence line that runs all the way down. So in terms of any view to the neighbor, that wouldn't be seen, but I see what you're talking about being visible to the front of the home so that from the street, you would absolutely see those. And I think there's a way to tuck those in there that, because I don't even like the look of the cement. I've been wanting to do some plantings here to cover up that cement anyways. Um, but that's where, you know, they'd have to be. We actually have one all the way in the back of the house, if you can see that. Yeah. That was put in on another addition. Um, I guess that's not really that noticeable from the street because it's pretty far back. Um, yeah, this house is much further back than the previous house we looked at. Uh, yeah. So it'd be easier to screen these on the side of the house. Right. Or in the rear if you wanted to. Yeah, because we have a pretty big, you know, and not big, but we have a pretty sizable front lawn. And <laughs> honestly, those pine trees, when people don't even see past the pine trees, they're so big. Um, that's the left-hand side of the house. This is 16. I'm sorry, this is 18. And I apologize for the junk on the side that's actually going to um, the dump on Saturday. Um, again, we've got trees here. And even in the winter, those stay pretty much like they are. They completely block the view from the neighbors to the left of us. And I obviously care deeply about what the neighbors think. So I, again, would not want them to have to see anything. This air conditioner sticking all the window is going to be coming out. Um, I would like to consider fencing in this area. Um, if possible, I'll bring that to you as a consideration of something I'd like to do is to bring that fence line all the way forward. We have a fence line running all the way down the property and just continue that up to the front of the property. Um, and then I probably would actually do a nicer fence than that and just put a fence here. So that can be an option also is maybe just gating these off. And so from the street, you don't see them at all. You can run, you can run piping through the garage to get into the building. You can run piping from the closet on the other side to get into the, there's a lot of ways you can sneak the piping in from, from con condensers on the side of the back of the building to get it in without putting it on the front room or in the street. But I think you yeah. heard our last discussion. Yeah, I did. And I was really happy that I was able to hear that. So, um, all right. So that kind of goes with that. Um, let me go back to my question. Did you have? Yeah. Let me just put these away. Back to my... Okay, can you still see my agenda or no? No. Uh, one more share. Sorry, here we go. We have a white screen. There you go. Can you see that now? Yes, yeah, well, I see you. Yes. Yeah, so again, I haven't made a decision. I've been getting quotes on both. If you have any recommendations on companies, I'd be... That would be helpful. I find these guys to be really challenging to get in touch with. They're too busy. They don't show up. Um, it's been a long process to even get a couple of quotes for each. So again, I'd like to do an HVAC system. I just don't know if it's going to be affordable. So let me work on that. But um, it seems like I have a good understanding of what you guys need to have done with the condensers, whether or not they're on an HVAC system or whether they're splits. So 
I think we can move on. Um, like I said, the home does need to be painted. Um, so do we need a permit to paint? No. No. And we don't, we don't, we don't uh, require anything about colors. Hopefully you won't paint it pink or <laughs> lavender or something, but. No, and I'm, I'm, I'm actually surprised for a historic district that you don't um, enforce <laughs> new colors. Um, uh, there, I wrote, is, there is one provision in the code that says a broad range of colors is permitted, but brighter, more vivid shades should be only used as accent colors, not primary surface colors, fluorescent, neon, metallic, or other intentionally garish colors, as well as striped yeah. dots or other are prohibited. So, yes, um, no, I, I am fully, I actually, what I'm going to be doing right now, as far as I think the plan is, is a very um, light sage green for the majority of the house with some um, light copper and bronze and maybe brass accents. Um, the grills on the window are going to be an anodized copper. It's really beautiful. I can show you the sample. Um, it looks kind of has a very vintage appeal to it. Um, that's one reason, again, I went with Anderson because you can make them look less modern and all the you know the modern colors that they have like oh you get a choice of six colors in the vinyl they're so ugly i don't like any of them so um it will be i promise very very tasteful on the painting <laughs> and we'll, we'll blend into nature very lovely <laughs> in the neighborhood your accent on the doors what, what is that i'm sorry what in terms of color Number four, stone ledger accent around. Oh, so um, I haven't seen much of this, so I think you guys may not do it. Um, I thought it might be interesting aesthetically to, are you familiar with what stone ledger looks like? No, I'm not. Okay, um, I have some samples. Let me open it, let me share it. Getting the hang of this. <laughs> So that's what stone ledger looks like. And so I thought just around the front of the house, not on the upper level, just on the lower level, just around the doors might be interesting to do something that um, just gives the house a little bit more of a um, upgrade, um, gives the house just a little something special, something extra. Um, this obviously I'm picking a pattern that would go the same direction as the siding goes. So I wouldn't be putting any crazy round river rocks or anything in there. And it would just be on that front section of the house. Um, not acceptable. Just, what's that? Yeah. I, I would say that's not acceptable. Okay. I had a feeling that may not work, but I thought I would. There is a provision that you can't use any artificial um, stone or brick. It would actually be real stone. I don't like fake. Yeah, well, even even that, uh, you know, if it's not a stone house, you don't put stone, modern stone walls on facades on historic houses in the village of Rhinebeck. So I'm sorry, I wouldn't vote for that. No, no that's fine. I, I wouldn't I, vote I, for it either. I no. figured it wasn't a go, but like I said, I you know I was in real estate for a long time. I've yeah, been and thousands, thousands of I've seen thousands of homes, and I've actually seen it done on older homes. And if it's done right, it can actually look really nice. But I hear you and I didn't think it was an option, but I thought- The I last question is about fencing. You can talk to Ryan. Uh, he can put you on fence regulation. Basically, it's uh, um, four, four feet high until you break the front plane of the house. Then it could be six feet, you know, on back to the backyard. And, you know, stockade fence, double-sided fence. There's a lot of options, but Brian can put you in on that um, about fencing, but, you know. Okay, because that that actually might just be the option to cover the condensers completely, because like I said, we already have fencing down the right side, which is 16 South Street. We already have a fence line that runs pretty far down. That's a wooden fence. On the left side, we don't have fencing at the front of the house where the condensers would be. So maybe we could just replicate the same fence that we have on the right side so that, again, we have the symmetry there and then that covers everything and nobody sees it from the front at all. So um, that could be an option. So um, 
Well, thank you. And I, again, I'm, <laughs> my apologies for being a little crazy there with trying to share the screen. I was super organized, but it just didn't go, <laughs> oh, go, go, as, like, go as planned. Uh, well, we appreciate you coming in. Yeah, if I had done this in person, you would have each had a booklet. <laughs> with oh, yeah. everything. Um, what 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 are your plans, Jess, for your next steps? Are you you're, you're going uh, to come yeah, back so, to us with with what? So thank you for asking. Um, the first thing that we want to do is replace the windows because if we're going to paint, the windows obviously come first. And again, the lead time on those is really long. So <clears throat> I'd like to get those ordered as soon as I get. Um, the approval that I need and permits that I need. So if, um, I guess Brian could talk me through that. I heard you say something about, and I'll, he also said about there being another, I can come back and present in September. The first Tuesday in September will be a meeting. If you can put all your package together, you come in for formal site plan, we have four weeks to put it all together. Um, and then, uh, as I said, PowerPoint slideshow, uh, a, a, a one a P, Adobe Acrobat and put it together into one long PDF. You can scroll up and down through it. A okay. lot of ways to do it that make it very easy. Yeah, I understand. I can understand yeah, your and you, <laughs> as well as my frustration. That was not. You're, you're, I just wanted to make sure because we don't run into any <laughs> terrible situations. You you weren't planning on ordering the windows until then, were you? I'm sorry. Could you repeat that? I wasn't planning. You said on you weren't planning on ordering the windows until then were you no i mean i that's i wanted to find out what the next step was yeah, and okay fine like i do have to take more steps with you so no i won't order them obviously yet they're a huge investment um yeah so. they are they are and you don't want to you don't want to go through an ordering process if, if, if you no especially these because right. every one of them has to be custom none of the sizes are anything that they make but again i <clears throat> i really looked at every window company out there and i nixed the majority of them because they're just they're cheap looking they're tacky looking they may be colonial style double hung windows but they look really bad and these <clears throat> e-series anderson windows are really top of the line they're gorgeous i've received the color samples on everything and i think they're going to look just gorgeous i think nobody would have anything to say hopefully but praise for what i'm looking to do because i i think i <clears throat> understand the aesthetic i know with the stone i went a little off but um you know i understand what it is that you're looking to have and i too want to keep everything um <clears throat> you know historical but just you know give everything a bit of an upgrade so that's all i had to speak about i will I hopefully we'll see you after labor day and you have the old package ready yes hopefully quickly yeah, thank you. I definitely will pull it together. And um, and it seems like you give approval on, like in that, I'd get approval right then and there, or do you guys go off and talk about things? How does that work? We, we, we if, you, if you have everything you know, laid out and everything that you want to do, um, itemized, uh, we, we, we might be able. Yeah. Okay, great. Um, I will get some drawings together. I'll see how they come out. Um, if not, obviously, I'll have somebody else um, put some drawings together. Maybe you have any recommendations? I mean, because to go out and find like an architect to make a couple of drawings, I think, you know, these guys have like minimums. You don't, you don't, if, we don't want you to spend the money to hire an architect. We have a pretty good idea what you want to do with the windows and, uh, uh, you know, put together a good package with, with the windows, with the air, the air conditioning, where you could figure out where they could, let, you know, hide the... Uh, the channels, especially um, from being seen from the street, you know. Um, yeah, I know that a couple of people said, oh, they'd have to run down the front of the house. I said, unacceptable. They're like, well, you can paint them. I'm like, still unacceptable. <laughs> like that, That's what, you know, the Catholic Church said. That's what the contractor said. That's what the priest said. So, well, we don't listen to it. That's the easiest way for him. And then we worked out a very easy way to do it, to hide them. You can't even see them. Uh, yeah, so I, I just, I don't love the look. Too. Jess? Yes. When I send you the application for site, site plan, I can provide some references to architects that are very reasonable and uh, provide uh, excellent work, so. Okay, well, it just sounded like too that they understand what we're trying to do. So maybe that's not super necessary because we are literally replacing everything the same except for those three windows that we want to enlarge and obviously make them look 
um, closer to all the other windows because I realized they just, I don't know who did that. And I, you know, my mom just unfortunately, um, people take advantage of her a lot. She doesn't really, you know, she's very nice to people. And so people come in and do things to this house that they shouldn't have done. And so my goal is to bring everything back and make it beautiful and make it a home that, you know, people are really proud to have in the village. That's my goal. I'll <laughs> leave the it. option to you so you can make the, dis you can have it. You have the information. You can contact the person. It's at, at your, at your discretion. Okay. So. All right. All right. I appreciate that, Ryan. You've been so helpful. All of you have. Thank you. This is my first time um, working with you all. So um, it's a learning curve for me and I appreciate um, all your patience and I will have everything prepared uh, to run more smooth um, the first Tuesday of September. Ryan, is there anything you need from me in terms of um, getting on the calendar for that meeting? We can do this off channel, Jess. We can do this over yeah. email. Very good. All right. And come in and see you. All right, gentlemen, thank you so very much. I really appreciate your time this evening. I know I probably ran you over and whoever is after me is probably not happy. So I will let you go if there's anything else. Um, that's it. Thanks. Thank you. All right. Well, last thank night, you, Jess. Another, another discussion with the Northern Duchess Hospital. Are you, uh, who is coming? Todd Net Neelan. Well, I see your name. Hopefully uh, you didn't walk away, Chair. I know, so I don't fall asleep. <laughs> it's Todd there. All right, we'll give him a few more minutes. Uh, why don't we do the one other item? Um, we have six sets of minutes, which makes us all caught up. I want to thank Miranda so much for doing that. And I want to thank Jeff for his hard work um, editing them and being Miranda's teacher and guide to this. And uh, she's getting better with each set of minutes. And a lot of that is, is thanks to Jeff uh, doing this for her. Well, so, Miranda, Miranda did the lines work and I'm grateful yeah. for her for that and she's really getting great at it and and most of all i'm glad that we're finally caught up we were like a year behind there for a while yeah we're not breaking the law anymore yeah, so I that's think great that there's no law against making a motion to approve six sets of minutes i don't think we have is to it six it. sets or five sets well i had the 315 four five five seventeen Six seven, six twenty one, and no. seven five. I it thought for sure, Chair, we approved the March fifteenth yes. at the July meeting, but it I, it doesn't hurt to yeah. make it a part of this vote. Yeah, I, uh, uh, right now. Two? Okay, all right. So I'll make a motion to approve as amended six sets of minutes. March 15, 2022, uh, April, 5th, April 5th, 2022, May 17, 2022, June 7, 2022, June 21st, 2022, and seven, uh, July 5, 2022. We have a second. I'll second that. All right, we can do a vote. Just raise your hand. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. Thank I'm just going to mute and I'm going to give Todd a call and right. find out where he's at because I'm pretty sure he's still at the hospital. Okay. So did you, did you guys get to see anything about the hospital? Michael and I had a pre-meeting. We went over what they're doing. They bought a, the third building. They own two buildings on Route 9, and they bought the building next to it. They have one more building towards Bill Clark's Mall that they now own, and they want to use the backyard of some of those buildings, uh, or the, or the third building, put something like 20 parking spots in. Are they permanent spots, or are they said temporary spots? 
they're going to be gravel spots, but we need Todd to. Uh, Are they going to be part of the uh, the valet parking lot? Is that yes, true? I think they're in the valet parking lot. I'm assuming that. I'm assuming yeah. there is no parking at the hospital. It's really, really difficult. More and more people are saying, I can't buy a spot. And I need to my doctor. Get rid of my car and bring it back when I finish with the doctor. So the demands on valet parking because of the lack of personal parking, especially during like, you know, nine to two or three during their peak, peak hours, the lot is just not big enough. Yeah. And so I don't know. I mean, we have to have public hearings, voting board for the CBA, neighbors, how they feel about cars in their backyard um, on uh, uh, Kramer. So um, th th there are some issues here. And if, you know, they're just coming for a discussion, this looks like it's going to be uh, too difficult or it's going to open a can of worms with the public coming up in arms at planning board and CBA public hearings. Um, you know, and I just question, uh, I hope this doesn't mean that they've lost their parking at the church. There he is. See his face. Todd, can you hear me? He's on. He's talking to somebody on the phone. He's talking to Ryan. <laughs> Ryan, he's on the air. <laughs> so, so this is what's going on, Chair. He's video feeding in from the hospital, but audio-wise, he's over one of the landline phones, okay. wherever he is. So we're trying to figure out how to get audio. Uh, right now, you can you can you might you might have to sign in to Zoom on your phone. <laughs> um, I've done that. Will you will you uh, sign in on, on your computer, Mike? And I, Mike Frazier and I did that, and then you come and you have to mute one audio or one video, or else you get an echo by having to being on twice at the same time. There's no reason why you can't. Uh, just signing on it. He has an eye. Try, try now, Todd. So, David, can you hear me or not? There yes. we go. Okay. All right. So, everybody can hear me or? We can hear you. Can you hear us? Uh, I apologize. Sorry. <laughs> That's okay. So, um, what we are proposing is we have a property at 6533, which is one of our adjacent properties of the hospital. And we're looking to, and I'm trying to see if I can share my screen. Ryan, do you have it? I, Ryan, I can, can you share the screen or not? Yeah, hold, hold, hold on, Todd. Hold on. Thank you. So can you see that, Todd? Yeah, I can see this. Um, so you bought that third building to the right now. Lot number 476542. And you want to put yeah. a parking lot in the back of it. Well, so so the back of that, I mean, Ryan's kind of circling that. Um, Ryan, you're not able to show the... Uh, the Google that I sent you earlier. Um, I can look, Todd. I don't remember seeing anything that you sent me as part of a presentation. Okay. 
So what we're looking to do is that on the back where you can see it says 75. So we're looking to install a, a vinyl fence on that back section. And then what we do is we'd actually remove on the 6533 property, we would actually pull down the shed, which is, it's pretty dilapidated. And then we put item four down and we'd use it as temporary parking for maybe, I'm, I'm thinking the next two years. So I know um, we have a, you know, if you look at that 220, there's already a fence line there. On the 75 foot linear feet, we would install a fence. We remove a gut line. Yeah, there you go. Thank you. So is this overflow valet parking? I'm sorry? Is this for valet parking overflow? Well, it, it's, I would call it valley, overflow for valet parking. I'm, I, what I would call it is that we definitely understand. I know um, both um, John and, and, and a few other people have been on multiple calls, like over multiple years. Um, we definitely have a parking issue. So this would be a temporary, you know, res resolution to, I'm hoping maybe a two year situation. So you can see like we, we'd install a fence along the back of the property line. We'd remove the shed and install item four. And then my hope would be that I think from an employee standpoint, we could probably produce anywhere from like 25 to 35 parking spots. So we would try to utilize this space during the day, um, if not, you know, across maybe two shifts. Um, but right now at this point, we're really strapped as far as parking. Now, you have not, you still are renting the 90 or so parking spots from the Baptist Church. Correct. Yes. And this, this is in addition to, I mean, what we're seeing right now is with our volume, as far as patient care, I mean, we're actually seeing like an uptick, especially between um, Tuesdays and Thursdays, where we probably are seeing like an additional 200, you know, maybe offshoot as far as parking. So we're, what we're really looking to do is if we can get this area, we can actually set up this area. We'd actually set it up for employees, not, not visitors, not, you know, not patients. It would just, we just redirect employees to this location. Yeah. Um, well, the, the, there will be, I, under, we, I think we all understand there isn't enough parking at the hospital, but we have taken into consideration public hearings and the neighbors on either side, you know, on the right side and the and the upper, you know, the rear side here would have, we might have problems having a parking lot in their backyard. Um, yep. But, you know, I, 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 I have to hear that it's employee parking because I worry about the public trying to park on an unstriped parking lot. It'd be better if your staff used it. But so so there'd be steps that would have to be followed. Um, we we'd need, I believe we need a, a public hearing. We need a variance to use this as a parking lot. I'm not sure what, what all the steps would be. Well, I think that's what that's kind of what we're requesting. So, I mean, we we definitely have a fence line um, to the north, if you want to call it that. Um, there's to the south. Thank you for moving the cursor. Yeah, to the south, we would put a um, fence line across the back, um, and then we try to connect, you know, through gravel, and that's why we're not using asphalt. So we would actually install item four, 
just to utilize that temporary concept. And what will happen in two years? You have plans to- Well, within two on? years, our plan would be is that we're, we're actually working on, and I know David and John have been, you know, they've had different conversations over the years, but our plan would be that we're trying to build a multi-purpose or a multi-level parking structure that would be within the infrastructure of, of um, maybe near the Thompson house and kind of inside the parking structure. So right now what we're trying to do is just trying to alleviate some of the volume that we're seeing right now. But within two years, we're hoping that through the master facility plan that we might have some opportunities as far as parking. Because we had we had many discussions over several summers ago with John Clark, myself, the mayor, you know, hospital staff, and uh, we come pretty close to working something out. And then I guess new bands came along and things changed, but uh, we can certainly get back to that. We were very close on, uh, uh, you know, especially with John Clark's hard work, we we're very close to coming out with a really reasonable um, uh, parking lot using the, uh, the uh, hill in that area and having like three levels entering from the street from halfway down and from all the way down uh, without a lot of ramps and stuff. So we had to come a long way. Um, and I'm glad you're thinking about that. I hope you guys will be coming back soon to work on that. But it's like I said, we have to talk to the zoning enforcement officer and figure out the steps that would have to be followed to get approval for this. Are you anticipating an internal connection to the valet lot or having these employees come in from Route 9? No, no, it would be um, through the valet lot. So as far as from an employee standpoint, we'd actually you know, select certain employee groups and we direct them to that location. So we're identifying right now that probably we're, we're looking at 25 to 35 parking spots, which would be extremely helpful. Yeah. I'm sure you would get, you may get some questions from neighbors and uh, people are concerned about cutting down trees and that sort of thing. Um, but I think we have to consider it if, um, if the property is owned by the hospital, it's an expansion of the existing lots. Um, so I think um, it's reasonable to ask and we'll have to see what steps need to be taken to, um, because it is in the residential zone, it was never rezoned for hospital, a hospital district. So everything has to be done by variances for the most part. Right. Correct. And John, you're absolutely correct. So what we're looking to do is, and that's why um, if you look at the, the northern exposure as far as the fence line, we would install a fence off of the, I guess you would call it maybe the southeastern fence, you know. So we'd put in a vinyl fence which would mirror exactly what we have in, in the current property. And that's why we're not looking to, you know, go with asphalt. We'd actually look just with item four, it would be temporary. I know, I know a temporary is two years, but <laughs> we're hoping that we'd probably get maybe 25, 30 spots out of the situation. The thing that would be a good selling point to the public and the neighbors would be the temporary concept. Uh, the fact that whatever shifts you're going to use, like uh, you know, the first shift, the second shift, when people pulling in and out of there and, and uh, yeah. laughing and joking at three o'clock in the morning. Um, have a great weekend, you know, while people are trying to sleep. So you'd have to think of how you'd present it. But Ryan, I think we need either our attorney or, or, or Ken or Justin to lay out for all of us the exact steps that have to take place um, to make these various variances and public hearings happen. So Mr. Chair, uh, Todd has had a previous meeting with uh, Ken and Justin on site, and then a separate meeting just with with Justin pre previously, and essentially 
the discussion was, is this strictly something that is building permit application or is it the um, feeling or the suggestion of the planning board that uh, new Vance submit application for site plan and variances? My opinion, you have to go site plan and variances. I don't see how you can just do this by a building permit. Um, it's not consistent with zoning, so uh, you have to deal deal with it. Yeah. And I know they say two years, but it's going to take a lot longer than that to plan, design, and build a parking structure. So um, I don't consider this temporary. I think whatever that happens here is going to be relatively long term. And although the public okay. the public hearing would be in favor of more parking at the hospital. Everyone in the village knows there isn't enough parking, but you have the neighbors on two sides of you who would be concerned about, you know, living next door to a parking lot, and now they have trees and grass there. So that, that would be your main concern, and we would have to be especially sensitive to their comments and their needs. Maybe they wouldn't care, especially if you presented the hours of operation. But there has to be public and we have to follow a procedure to this. So board members, Christian and Guy, uh, do you uh, follow or side with the input from the chair and planning board member Clark? I do. I do. So um, Todd, I think you've heard the consensus yep. and the, feed, the feedback um, to go back to um your higher ups and those um you need to answer to and uh, say the uh opinion and the feedback from the planning board is that this proposal is subject to site plan review and any needed area variances and then i said the majority okay. of the public at a public hearing would be in favor of this but we have to really hear from the adjacent neighbors um, by having a parking lot in their backyard. Yep. So, so no, you can, it, yep. You follow this step? Yeah, so Ryan, I'll reach out to you tomorrow, but I appreciate it. Thank you. Sure. So just um, to give you some perspective, uh, the deadline to submit uh, for the September 6th meeting is uh, Wednesday, Octo uh, August 24th. That's August 24th, not October. So August 24th. Um, and it would be application for site plan and um, whatever the area variance is um, for this to, you know, expand um, your parking needs. Brian, if yep. Justin and Ken have had this discussion, um, they haven't sent anything to us. Um, no, that was the reason for Todd being here tonight. Okay. He needed a more clear understanding and feedback from the board of this concept that the hospital was considering, and I believe he's he's received it. Okay. okay. Well, think about it. I mean, you know. Well, you have to worry about making enemies or people hating the hospital. Um, just it's going to take a little, it's a, it could take a couple, a couple of months to get this approval, even though it can be done overnight, you know, cutting down trees and laying down some items before. We would have to, we would have to have a couple of steps. We need our CEO to outline the steps that have to be followed. Site plan recommendations to the CBA, public area to the CBA, and then final site plan approval take a couple of months but, no. um, and thank you david i appreciate it okay so let us know what happens todd anybody else have any other discussion items or questions they wanted to talk about yeah one thing i wanted to ask about was um, the uh, 
There had been recently, uh, I think it was June 14th, the mayor and the trustees passed a resolution to uh, related to rezoning the parcel that the Bulkley School is on. And um, there was some notion that, that a demolition permit had been requested. You know, I've heard so many rumors on this, but I didn't know that. And I haven't seen anything on this. Let me share my screen here if I can show you this. You see this? Can you see it? Yeah. Okay. So there was this resolution and a couple of points here. It says there's a lot of, there were a lot of whereases in this resolution, but one said, whereas the petitioner applied to the building department for a permit to demolish the Bulkley school, which I didn't, I didn't know that. Um, it also says the code enforcement officer had moved that it was a historic um, building. Now, I don't understand why we didn't receive both of those documents, why we weren't uh, informed. The code says that, um, and this is kind of circular here, it says if the zoning enforcement says if the zoning enforcement officer determines that a building is or may be a contributing building, he must refer to the planning board. And then it says, if he's unable to determine whether it is or may be, he has to refer to the planning board. And then it says every application for a demolition in the village should be submitted to be sent to the planning board within seven days. So I guess my questions are, I'll stop sharing now. I don't think we received the uh, application or the notification of the application within seven days that it was made, nor did we receive the findings or the determination that the zoning enforcement officer had made that it was a historic building and therefore should go to the zoning to the planning board so can you can you shed some light on this uh, Ryan explained to me that they apparently submitted a building permit to knock down the building zoning for us sort of looked at it and said it's in the historic district you have to fill out the historic demolition permit justifying financial need okay wait a minute, wait a minute. time out back up back up you just did. said you just sorry sorry get back up i'm sorry to interrupt you but just so i'm because because this is so confusing to me you just said the zoning board determined that that it was in or the, the zoning, zoning enforcement, enforcement officer yes okay said the broken set is on the register okay you have to fill out the historic demolition permit long form all the reasons justifications why you want to knock it down they knocked down a building on Mulberry Street, the empty hole down the block on Mulberry Street, it's got a demolition permit because it wasn't on the historic register. We never approved that or allowed that because it wasn't in the historic district. They say we applied for the zoning enforcement officer and got a building permit to knock it down. But that doesn't answer my question, <laughs> David. Why didn't we receive the notification? Why didn't we receive basically the notification or the application that was received from the applicant, because under no matter what the circumstances were, we should have received this. Um, whether whether the whether the zoning enforcement officer could or could not determine, and even if he could determine it was historic, which doesn't right. alter the facts, it should have come to the planning board. And typically- You've got what, a copy of Ken's letter saying an applicant yeah. applied to, de to demolish the broken center. He yeah. was told it's a historic building. Please fill out the long historic demolition permit and send it to the planning board, which he never did. Okay. Well, that's, so I, and that's probably what, you know, if it had come to us under most circumstances, we would have said, that, well, you need to do that. We probably would have said two things. We would have said, one, it needs to be a public hearing. And number two, um, this is not, a, you know, a little, a little barn that's halfway collapsed and, and 
you know, yes, it's in the historic district, but we're going to let you tear it down because there's nothing left of it. We wouldn't have said that. Um, we, but my guess is we, we would have said, all right, there's the long form to describe a hardship and make your case. Yeah. But none of that happened. So I guess my question is, when will we get these documents? And should it be scheduled for a meeting or does somebody is somebody going to go back to the applicant and explain you know your rights are to come before you should we should have notified the planning board and you can have your say before the planning board and if you have the hardship things all filled out that's great submit that beforehand uh, or they could come to us and we could probably request it, but I want to know when all these things are going to happen. He hasn't done. He has, he has to knock it down anymore. He didn't fill out the historic demolition permit for the planning board. No, he doesn't have to do that before he comes to us. That's not what the code says. The code says if, if an application is submitted, we need to be notified within seven days. And, it, and even if it's not in the historic district, if it's in the village of Rhinebeck, that hasn't happened. So, you know, when is that going to happen? Well, I think what happened is, and I don't know for a fact because I haven't been involved in this, but I think the CEO determined that he had to fill out a different form mm -hmm. and he hasn't filled that out. So he hasn't submitted the application to the planning board yet. So we weren't notified. And as I understand it, and like I said, I haven't been involved in any of the, this is what I heard is that the village board is considering hiring a um, separate planning consultant to look at this issue, come up with recommendations before October or September or some date in the near future. And the village board would consider those instead of considering a demolition permit. Yeah, um, well, yeah, I was at the meeting where they- circuit. Yeah. Yeah, well, which is part of the reason I'm confused about this because I was at the meeting where they put this resolution out Yes. And they modified it at the end to say, well, you have until October. Um, and there was some comment that says, well, you know, maybe the town should pay for it, et cetera. I think they got some subsequent letters. I, I know I'm pretty sure that since that happened, they um, they allowed the applicant to hire a planner. I think the planner was actually a landscape architect. I'm not sure what the planner was, but the it doesn't alter the fact that the thing that I'm still confused at that doesn't make any sense to me. me screen share this thing again. Um, and another one of these whereas is was that apparently the code enforcement officer had already made his determination that it was within the district, the, the jurisdiction of the planning board, right, rather than the building department, which is why the code says you should you know, submit your stuff to the planning board. Um, was this adopted? This, this was, a, yeah, this was adopted. Uh, and I think they made, John, at the end, I, I think they made just the correction that they were going to give them until September to hire a planner and have the planner come back and discuss it with them. And then what the mayor said was, I mean, there's, at that point in time, there's a couple of things they could do. They could, do, they could decide to do nothing. They could decide to, um, the, the mayor and the trustees could decide to rezone that parcel of land according to the specs that the lawyer for the applicant had written up. Um, or they could say, we're gonna defer this till the uh, comprehensive plan committee has completed their work and made their recommendations. Right. So, so they, they, I don't know where they stand with who they hired um, to do this, but in the meantime, th that shouldn't hold this process up. What should have happened is we should have been notified within seven days, and <laughs> you know there are there were a couple of meetings. In one meeting, Trustee Lewitt uh, said, "Well, we owe it to the developer, to the applicant, to make this quick." And another meeting, Lydia also suggested that in fairness to them we need to do this quicker but um if 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 the idea is to follow follow the process then we should have received this i don't understand why 
why we won't receive it. I, I, I think we should receive the application and we should receive the document of the, the document that the code enforcement officer created with his determination that it was a historic building and therefore within the jurisdiction of the planning board. And now he, he may or may, I, it's not clear to me because this is so vague, it's because it didn't follow the code as I understand it. It's not clear to me whether, whether it was communicated to the applicant that here is a long form that you must fill out as a requirement for the planning board. We wouldn't determine that until we reviewed the application. We probably would request it, but that would be for us to do. So I, I kind of like to recue this process and get it back into sync with, with the code and the law. Uh, I'd like to receive, I'd like for us, the planning board, to receive the application that was submitted and to receive the document that the code enforcement officer created uh, with his determination that it was a um, historic building uh, and therefore was within the jurisdiction of the planning board. And then, you know, maybe we, maybe we can get it on the schedule and they can come and tell us um, what they have in mind and we can schedule a public hearing, we can request a long form, we can do what we're supposed to do as the planning board. But I'd like to, I'd like to get this process back to operating the way it was supposed to have operated and for us to receive the documentation we should have received. Well, we can ask Ryan to get a copy of the, whatever this application was, and the letter of the determination of his own boss wrote to, but we can't do anything beyond that because no one has asked us to knock down a historic building. Right, but, but I, I, I would also like to know that the applicant knows they can come to us. They were, they were told. I, I that's not that, what I heard. That's not what I heard. What I heard was that they were told that it's a historic building and it's in the jurisdiction of the planning board and you must fill out a long form. If they were told that, they were told the wrong thing and they're operating under, they've been misdirected. I don't and they're believe operating under, and I'd like to, you know, I'd like to have someone to get back to them quickly and say, no, you can, you can request your meeting with the planning board. It's the jurisdiction of the planning board. You can request a meeting with them. Um, if you want to prepare some material in advance, that's fine because they'll probably ask for it. But um, I, I, I'm not convinced that they were told the right thing to do. They, for all we know, they might not understand that they had every right and privilege to request a, a hearing with us. Well, they have the right to request it, but they also need to fill out the, um, if the zoning enforcement officer said that the planning board has a jurisdiction, uh, then they need to fill out the complete uh, demolition request form. Okay. And if they um, haven't done that, then, then the well, onus is on them. It, wasn't, they don't wasn't, have to wasn't, ask yeah, somebody to come to our meeting. It's up to them to just ask to come to our meeting. Yes, that's that's exactly my point. I don't I don't know that they even know they can do that. Well, and, and, when you and, when you care whether they know whether they can do it or not, that's their decision. But well, Ryan, you well, because to... because this thing is being, I think it's being held up for no reason. And, um, and and now here's my other question. Are there two demolition request applications? One demolition request application for any building in the village and a separate, completely separate demolition application request for a, a, a building that the uh, code enforcement officer has determined to be historic? There are two different application forms. I don't know, right? Is there, is there... I'm going to say there is because if you're in the historic district, you have to come before us. If you're not in the historic district, you just needed an approval from the building department because they they, they tore down the house at the top of the street a number of years ago and built a new one. That... I, I I get that, but this this whereas here says the petitioner applied for a permit. Ryan, Where's the application? A, oh, Jeff, one second. Ryan, could you please get a copy of what Ken wrote to the applicant and whatever permit he's done and send it to us so we can at least know where we are? Yes. And please submit the long historic demolition form. He will have, no matter what he does, he has to fill out a demolition form and come before us because if he wants to demolish the building and build six or seven houses, he has to come to us. 
If he wants to do his plan, you can watch the June 15th meeting on Panda, where his new plan is four houses and knocking off the gym and knocking off the cinder block building and just leaving the core building. That is a demolition, a partial demolition of a building on the historic register. He would have to come to us for a demolition permit for the auditorium and the cinder block building as well. Because that's all one structure with one address on. Yeah, if they submitted, I'm just saying, if they submitted an application, we should have had that application within seven days. And I would like to see the second document, which the which states that it's a you know a historic building and and that they're Perhaps required to fill out a, a separate form, right? And I don't know what I don't know what they're doing. You watch the June fifth meeting, um, you can see what the discussion is planned with for four houses, one on. Uh, uh, Mul uh, Mulberry, one on, on Market, one face uh, on, on uh, another one on Mulberry, another one facing South Street, and then knocking off the auditorium building, the parking lot for 18 cars, knocking off the Cinderbuck building, whitewashing the red building to make it less noticeable, and putting nine apartments in there with five accessible, handicap accessible things. And they were looking at, and you'd have to wait a year and a half before the comp plan committee would finish its work. Plus the zoning committee would have to meet and revise the zoning code. Or if you come up with some crazy scheme to make it happen now, the applicant didn't want to do the demolition, didn't want to wait a year and a half. Is there some way without spot zoning that they could restructure an adaptive reuse for this specific building? Yeah. And That's David Gordon, I think it's David Gordon, uh, one of our two attorneys, Emily, Emily's husband, said a scary thing. He asked the mayor and the village board, are you intending to allow multiple family buildings just on this spot or change the zoning code to allow multiple family buildings throughout the village? And I don't think the board had an answer for that one. But that's kind of a... Yeah, I, I, I think that's right there. And, and, and frankly, it, it, that's kind of a separate issue that that request for them to rezone the parcel and change the village code to uh, to whatever the lawyer requested which would allow them to do all that that's a separate thing and that that doesn't mean that they should not have been allowed to ask you know submit an application and explain to us what they want to do that's a standard procedure for the Brian, planning board. But those are those are separate Brian. actions yeah, but I think the, the the they wanted to do something that the applicant wanted to do something that involved the rezoning to get yes. multiple family. So yeah. that means it goes to the village board, and the village board said that they were willing to accelerate the process and try to decide something before the end of the comprehensive plan analysis. Right. And the applicant was willing to participate in that. Uh, he would not go through with the demolition. That's my understanding of how it works. Okay. I, Whether okay, it well, was all right. worked that, out or not with the applicant, I don't know. All right. Where they new, stand okay, on it, so I don't that, know. But until they form it, they fill out the uh, demolition form that's appropriate yeah. for this board, then we're in limbo. We shouldn't be yeah. doing anything. I see. Well, that's news to me, John, and that might be right, but I've not heard that from anyone. That's no just one, my uh, understanding. I don't okay. know that. For what, a fact. What, what meeting is that documented in? That they I didn't say there was that. a meeting. That's my understanding from okay. what I, heard. I I get that. What I'm trying to bring up here is there's a lot of people that have different understandings about things. And until I saw what was written here, uh, it contradicted with my understanding of how things were. My under I didn't know that they submitted an application for demolition. And I don't know that they retracted that. We no, didn't receive any information, which we should have according to the village code. And I want to see it. It's as simple as that. Go to the building department and ask for it. I'm okay, Ryan. Yeah. I'm asking for them to send this to us. Right. Send it to I you. shouldn't, I'm I shouldn't, I listen, I shouldn't have to. It, okay. You're asking for it. Right, right. I'm, I'm, I'm on the planning board. And the code says the planning board should receive an application within seven days of submission. So clearly, there's a lot of hearsay and rumor about what actually happened. But when I see a resolution passed by the mayor and the trustees saying that they did submit the request and we did not see it in seven days, 
something went off the tracks here and I want it to be corrected. It's that simple. Uh, go talk to Lydia and the building department. Mm -hmm. We can't answer that. We've seen nothing. But I'll see okay. if I can get from Ken his determination saying that this cannot demolish this building. You have to fill out the law and sort of demolition law. And as far as that, we still know nothing about the Brogan Center. We can't yes. prove anything until the village board takes action. No, we don't. Uh, okay. Um, the historic demolition permit. I am totally neutral on this. I've seen yeah, the yeah. I'll, seven I'll, I'll take John's advice and I'll ask Lydia. Lydia should know. Okay. Or she should at least be on top of this. I, I've seen the plans for the seven houses. I've, the six, seven, I've seen the plans from the June 15th meeting that were presented. You can see it on Panda for nine apartments and four buildings. Mm -hmm. either, one, if the, either one of them is, I don't have any opinion, one way or the other. If yeah, I, I'm, I'm sorry. Opinion. Enough said. I, that's a separate issue. I, you know, no. there was, I saw a doc, I saw a resolution passed by the mayor and the trustees that said that an application was submitted and we didn't receive it. And that's against the code and I'll handle it with Lydia. And that's enough said. Okay. Okay. As far as the Brogan Center, we don't know anything. Watch, watch the videotape. The, 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 they're, they're trying to come up with something and I don't know. And if they change a code, they change a law, they say you can have nine families on the property, then it's within the code and we can approve that. Um, if they, they say you have to wait, you just want to wait, fills out the long form, comes to the planning board. That's right. Well, and we Draw won't know that till the end of September. Yes. We won't know that till the end of September. Whatever happens. Irrelevant. So that, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll follow up with Lydia on why we didn't get the information we were supposed okay. to and find out from Lydia what was actually said to the applicant and if they're aware of their rights. Okay. And that's all I've got to say. Are we done? Yes, we're done. No, we're okay. not. Go uh, ahead. I need a motion to adjourn. I'll make a motion <laughs> okay. to adjourn, Jeff. I'll second. All those in favor, raise your hand. Aye. Aye. See you after Labor Day. Perhaps it'll be cool. Everybody, please stay safe. I have no idea what's happening with public meetings. Kathy could decide to extend it or of us coming public in here after Labor Day. We don't know anything yet. We could all be, we could have a monkeypox epidemic that closes uh, public meetings.